Welcome back to Fan Fiction Wannabe. This video I have decided to do a longer video. Let me know if you prefer the longer or shorter videos. Are you ready to dive headfirst into the captivating world of fan fiction? Well, you're in the right place. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to join our amazing community. Now for the story. Killing Monsters Part 1 Hate. I thought I could surpass it. Overcome it, as I'd overcome all things in the past. With the power of friendship and determination, anything is possible, right? The good guys always win, right? Even when the chips are down, a hero always finds a way to triumph, right? To save everyone. No matter the cost. That's how fairy tales end, don't they? With victory. Good triumphs over evil. The hero forgives his defeated enemies and rides off into the sunset. The hero settles down, marries the girl, and lives happily ever after. I thought that was how the story would end. I was wrong. Stupid. Naive. Boy. How could I forgive pain for what he did? How could I accept him? How could I possibly understand all he'd said all that he'd done? Much less countenance it. He killed Jiraiya. Slaughtered the entire village without a second thought. Stabbed Hinata right in front of me. Every man, woman, and child of the hidden leaf is dead because of his actions. Because of him. I fought that man-man and all his puppets, butchered his bodies until only a single one remained. I hunted him, beat him down, looked him in those blasted Rinnegan eyes, and asked him a single question. Why? Why do all this? He didn't even answer me. He just laughed. He said that there couldn't possibly be peace in this wretched world. I tried to forgive him. I really did. Let it not be said that I didn't try. But I couldn't. When faced with that answer, something in me snapped. Thousands dead. A village laid to waste. For what? What's your reason? That's no answer. Yet he kept laughing at me. He said that I was just like him. That I knew pain. That I would be just like him. Perhaps I was. Perhaps I did. Perhaps I am. In the end, I never did get my answers. There was no great epiphany to be had here, no heart-to-heart, -heart, no sharing of ideals. I was left with a raving lunatic, his wounded minion, and my own rage. Tell me, could you forgive such a person? When you've lost everyone and everything, what would you do? When someone takes everything away from you, would you forgive them? When a prattling man man sees fit to eradicate your entire world, would you show them mercy? Maybe you could. Maybe you're a better person than me. Maybe someone else would have found a way. But me? No. I saw red, and there was only hatred. Hate hate had a had a hate hate. My hands tore Nagato out of that stupid contraption, wrestled him to the ground, and started punching. Over and over and over again. He wounded me. I remember him shouting. I remember my arms going numb as the world vanished around me in a corona of white light. I remember the pain. I'm not even aware of what happened. Damn it, I don't know if I managed to kill that rotten bastard or not. They've even denied me the satisfaction of knowing. I hate it. I hate him. It's all their fault. His fault. I hate pain. I hate those wretched eyes of his. I hate this rotten world that he stranded me in. I hate the fate that took my friends and family from me. I can't do anything but hate. What's fair about this? Is this what humanity is like? Then maybe humanity should die. In the end I'm left here, left to choke on my own anger, my wrath, my fury. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I'm losing blood. I still see them. All the dead. I still hear their voices. I can't do it. I can't. It's too much. I can't. Ruby Rose was many things. Determine? Check. Fearless? Check. Strong? Nope. Never had that become more apparent than in this moment when she was about to fall to her death. With each passing second, the aspiring huntress in training felt her grip slipping against her will, callous fingers sliding across broken asphalt as she struggled for a purchase that simply wasn't there. She couldn't hold on. All the while the abyss yawned wide below her, ready to swallow her whole the moment she let go. No. Bad Ruby. Think light thoughts. Thin legs kicked frantically, 
trying to propel her small body upright, to no avail. She just couldn't make it. As much as she might want to, though her pale face reddened with exertion, she simply lacked the strength to pull herself up. Dang it, she didn't even have Crescent Rose to slow her fall. It was right there too, just out of reach. A frustrated whine leaped from her lips. Why is this happening? Why me? No one to hear her. No one to save her from falling. Only Purs Vi, frantically tugging at her sleeve with all his might. Bless his little heart. It almost gave her the strength to pull herself to safety. Almost. Brute force had never been her forte to begin with. Yam was the one who punched people and bench-pressed Grim for sport. Not her. She wasn't cut out for this. Her grip slipped again, and for a furtive instant, she accidentally stole a glance over her shoulder. Big mistake. It only made the fear that much worse than before. Negative emotions like that would attract Grim, sooner or later. Mountain Glen was crawling with them. Vertigo still made her stomach spin. Was there even a bottom? Would she just keep falling forever? Gah! Stop! She wriggled and kicked her legs again, trying to use her semblance to pull herself up. Think light thoughts. Such as falling to her imminent doom? Leaving a red stain upon the ground those were not light thoughts. Not at all. In a fit of pique, she kicked her legs again and tried to use her semblance. Without any traction for her feet to grasp, she couldn't even build up the speed needed to slip away from her own weight. It only taxed more of her aura, which probably wasn't going to shield her from a fall like this and gravity would not be denied any longer. Ruby keened in frustration. Nana no no! Her fingers slid the last little inch, fingertips slipping until finally, there was nothing she could grasp. Zvi lost his grip and tumbled backward, bounding upright again with a frantic whine. Ruby pitched back, flailing at empty air with a yelp. Her eyes snapped shut in instinctive dread and thus didn't see the small cordy perk up as she fell out of sight. She wouldn't even know why. Until someone caught her. Ruby knew it at once, if only because her momentum came to an abrupt halt, and she nearly wrenched her shoulder out of its socket. Left dangling over the pit, she daren't open her eyes at first. Who had saved her? Zvi? Unlikely. Aura or no, Per Pupper just didn't have that kind of raw strength. So who then? Had Yang found her? Weiss? Blake? Well, if it was Yang, surely her sister would have made a pun by now, a painfully bad pun. It wasn't any of them. Bloody hell, why are you so heavy? As first impressions go, this wasn't the best. Excuse me? Silver eyes burst open with an indignant start to catch a glimpse of a tan hand clasped tightly within hers. Said hand was attached to a bronzed arm, which coincidentally was also connected to a shoulder clad in the tattered remnants of an orange jacket. All corded muscle and lean strength, it held on to her hand for dear life. The owner of said hand had nearly flung himself into the abyss after her. Half his body lay pitched into the void. She glimpsed a pair of whiskered cheeks framed by blue eyes and blonde hair nearly gone white. But the face wasn't lined with age. It was young, within years of her own. More aptly, it was the face of her savior. Then that stern face creased with effort, and quite suddenly, she found herself flying into the air. We? Not the most eloquent reply, but that was the sound she made as she soared up out of the pit, over his back, and into the ground. She landed in a controlled tumble, snatched up Crescent Rose's collapsed form, and spun it out behind her back in a single liquid movement just in case there were any grim nearby seeking to take advantage of her distraction. There was no need. No attack came. Reluctantly, she turned away from the empty street to face her unlikely ally. Said ally had Zvi in his arms. She should have been concerned about that. Zvi wasn't. Nope, the little corgi panted pleasantly as a calloused hand stroked him behind the ears, completely at ease. There's a good dog. The newcomer hummed softly as he continued his ministrations. You're just a big softer, aren't you? Zvi barked in disagreement, and that blonde head bobbed. I'm sure you can be quite fierce when you want to be. Were they talking? Ruby kept closer to them, sizing the newcomer up as one might a large beowulf. Well, he really was wearing orange rags, what might have, and oh wow, you could grind meat on those abs. No. Bad Ruby. Pay attention. Focus! 
Steering her gaze away from his scarred chest, she willed herself to raise her gaze and meet his own. When he refused to look at her, she coughed. Once. Twice. Thrice. When that didn't produce the results she wanted, she tapped her foot. Finally, those peerless sapphire orbs met hers. He turned his body toward her, and she froze, wondering if this was a good idea. Hey! She choked out. Thanks for the save back there. Her erstwhile ally grunted wordlessly. No problem. So, she ventured. My name's Ruby. He still didn't look at her. Naruto. Do you live here? She asked. Course. This is my home. A heartbeat later, he seemed to realize just what he'd done, that she was speaking to him because those baby blue eyes widened when they finally found hers. His gaze flitted to Crescent Rose, and his mouth formed a thin line of displeasure. Zvi took that chance to wriggle free from his grasp and skitter back towards her. Ruby flicked a nervous glance after her corgi. She only took her eyes off the stranger for a moment. Just a second. A blink. It was more than enough for him to make his escape. Zvi had only just bounded over to her when he moved. An orange blur shot past Ruby, leaving her spinning like a top in its wake. When she looked down, Crescent Rose was gone from her grasp. Her eyes widened. My baby. Wait. Without thought, she turned to pursue, pausing just long enough to snap a sharp command at Zvi. Go, she cried. Find Yang and the others. Then she gave chase. Even then, she nearly didn't catch up with him in time. Were it not for the faintest motion of movement in the corner of her eye, she wouldn't have seen the stranger at all, let alone known which way to go. But Ruby Rose was nothing if not determined. She glimpsed the shock of blonde hair in the corner of her eye. Then she was off like a bloodhound on the hunt. She certainly made enough noise. Didn't matter. Her weapon would be avenged. An angry keening noise pushed itself past her teeth as she chased him down. Stop right there, criminal scum. Hey. Listen. I said come back here, you, you, sneak thief. A shout was the sole response. You'll never take me alive. Red and orange blurs twined with one another as twin streaks shot through the ruined city, vaulting over obstacles, weaving through dilapidated buildings, dodging the odd grim that inevitably tried to devour them. Had she been in her right mind, Ruby would have realized dodging a pack like this was a bad idea. She was bound to draw more and more of them down on her head the longer she ran. But she didn't care. She wanted her weapon back, and she was going to use it to bash that bastard's head in. Whomever he was, he was fast. But not fast enough. When an Ursa reared up out of an alleyway to bar his path, the blonde slowed. Just a touch, just a hair to adjust his aim. Then he snapped forward, bifurcating the beast down the middle in a single spinning slide. Somehow, the sight only made Ruby angrier. No one used her weapon but her. This was heresy. Blasphemy. Dishonor of the highest degree. She said as much, of course. Shouted it at his back when she chased him into a building teeming with more of the big bastards. But most importantly, give me my scythe back. A red blur shot at her. Have it then. Ruby didn't expect him to collapse her weapon and fling it over his shoulder. In an instant, all thoughts of the chase were forgotten, and she leaped up to catch her baby. Unfortunately, in doing so, she found herself forced to stop her chase for a moment. Only a moment, but it was enough for the Grim to close on her, and as she fought them off, her enemy turned tail and booked it. Ruby almost considered letting him get away. She had her weapon back. Why bother? She had nothing more to gain from racing after this madman, right? There was no point, right? Now she was just chasing him out of revenge. Surely she was above that. With a blood-curdling shriek, she flew at him again. Your head is Methian! Nope. After what felt like an eternity of cat and mouse, Naruto took a wrong turn and crashed headlong into a wall. Unprepared for this sudden deceleration, Ruby crashed into his back and bounced off. What was this guy made of? Pure metal or something? Stupid, stupid, stupid! The young man hissed, clutching at his head as she stalked after him. Why did I do that? Now they'll find me again! He paused, cocking his head. No, Sasuke! He growled to himself. We're not going to kill her. 
That'd be wrong. Listen to Jiraiya. On second thought, O.W. Mean it. Ruby kicked him in the shin, sending him stumbling forward. Why did you take my side? Who are you talking to? Frantic blue eyes snapped over his shoulder. My friends, of course. He said it as though it were the most obvious thing in the world. Can't you see them? They're all around you. Ruby looked left. Ruby looked right. Ruby saw no one and nothing. Only empty streets and stoic silence awaited her. Okay, away. Her hands came up, and she took a tentative step backward. Just gonna walk away from the crazy guy. She watched him chatter onto himself, and her heart plummeted. Well, that settled it. This guy was nuts. Was he even sane anymore? Oh, are you leaving already? The blonde remarked idly as she stepped away. That's all right. Everyone leaves. Ruby's heart began to pound wildly in her chest, beating frantically against her breast like some frantic beast trying to escape its cage. Every second was sheer agony, as if time itself had slowed to a crawl. Her thoughts ceased to have any meaning, and so too did they betray her in their infamy. She couldn't just leave him here, even if he was a no-good side-stealer. In that moment, Ruby knew she'd been had. There could be no escape for her now. She couldn't just leave him behind, could she, now that she had unwittingly stumbled upon this lost soul? Naruto had unthinkingly found the perfect weapon to use against her, one she was utterly and wholly powerless against. One glance at his pitiful expression peeking out at her from behind the safety of his hand, and her fate was sealed. Her mouth gave a final traitorous twitch as her shoulders slumped in defeat. All right, all right, she sighed. Don't give me that look. Come on. You can't stay here. Why? He tilted his head at her. It's nice here. Quiet, you know? Mountain Glen is infested with Grimm, she cried. And? Ruby wanted to shake him. Hard. What it means is that you can't stay here. The ground began to quake underfoot. It began as a small tremor, one she nearly missed in her anger and confusion. She dismissed it initially as nerves or her own anxiety. It was only when her teeth started chattering in her skull that Ruby realized what was happening. No, that wasn't possible. Surely her luck couldn't be that bad. Right. Her eyes widened as the tremor became a quake. Howling followed soon thereafter. She didn't want to look. She really, truly didn't. Dread compelled her to turn. Oh no. Initially, she didn't see anything in the distance. The street opposite them looked as dead and dull and lifeless and gray as it always had been. Ruby almost dared to hope that it was her imagination. Nothing more. But not for long. Within moments, a black wave of grim came boiling around the corner. There were hordes of them. Dozens of Ursa and Beowulf and other grim beyond counting. Angry slavering maws gaped wide for them, a tide of claws and teeth eager to rip and tear and rend until nothing more remained. What? Where did they come from? She knew the answer, of course. They'd run past countless Grimm during their chase. And now they'd had the time to catch up. It was her own fault, of course. She'd been so consumed with taking down the thief that she'd not thought to stop and think of what might happen afterward. The Grimm had no such compunction. They didn't need to think. They surged forward in a roaring wave, thinking only one thing. Death. Unbidden, Ruby felt her boots slide back half a step before she mastered herself. All right, Ruby. She shook her head and readied her weapon, even as her instincts screamed at her to flee. Stop. Breathe. She had Crescent Rose with her. She could fight them. All of them. Even if she had a civilian to protect. Even if she was by herself. And oh gods, that was a lot of grim. Move. Ruby jolted as the harmless, civilian, shouldered past her. What are you doing? Blue eyes blazed gold. We are fighting. Quite suddenly, there were two of him. Now three. Rising from twin plumes of smoke, they stood beside him and snapped their hands together as Ruby looked on in mute disbelief. Something blue and white and so very, very loud burned in their each of their shared grasp a terrible tearing shriek that grew louder with each passing moment. When the original raised his right hand, his brothers mirrored him, wind whipping at their tattered jackets. What the heck was this? Some semblance or something? Ruby didn't know. 
didn't care. She only knew that the Grimm were nearly upon them. Her eyes began to itch, burning in her skull as her heightened emotions raged. Then, as one, the trio threw their arms forward. Three separate spheres flew from their hands. Rays and shuriken, was all she heard. And the world erupted. In hindsight, Ruby realized she might have been too close to the blast. If only because she found herself forced to shelter her sight behind an arm. She never truly saw the explosion, forced as she was to squeeze her eyes shut against it. But she did hear the shriek. It built and built, rising and swelling in an endless crescendo until finally, silence as if all the world were holding its breath for fear of another blast. Ruby didn't blame it. After that, her ears were ringing. No one uttered a word. At long last, however, she dared to look up and see why. Somewhere out of sight, Naruto hummed appreciatively to himself. Ruby soon saw why. There were no grim remaining. There wasn't even a street anymore. In place of what had once been a dilapidated street, only a crater remained. No, calling it a crater was tame. It looked like a meteor had fallen out of the sky and split everything apart. What little remained of the grim tide was even now dissolving, wasting away on the breeze like ash. Her mind rebooted as she blinked, silver eyes fluttering shut and open in quiet disbelief. This guy didn't even need a weapon to kill Grimm. He talked to himself in a way that suggested he was clearly broken, physically or otherwise, and he could nuke Grimm. Nuke grim. Well, that made things simple. In the end, only four words came to Ruby's frazzled mind. She latched onto Naruto's arm with all her might. Can I keep you? Lost. He was lost. Terribly, horribly lost. On some subconscious level, Naruto knew this, yet he still allowed himself to be led along like a dog on a leash regardless as the girl, who introduced herself as Ruby, chattered at him. He was making a mistake. Every step he took promised disaster. Had he a full set of wits about him, he would have torn his arm from Ruby's grasp and fled back into the wilds with all haste. Buried himself in some abandoned wasteland so that he might never be found. Some small sliver of sanity demanded that he do just that, before being smothered by the voices in his head. This wasn't right. In revealing himself earlier, he put himself at risk, her at risk, everyone at risk. He still didn't let go of her hand. Stupid. The voices hissed at him. You'll kill us all. Aren't you already dead? His query quieted them briefly. So try not to make any sudden movements around Blake. Ruby's voice dragged him back to reality, forcing him to hop over a bit of rubble when she did the same. She's kinda twitchy when it comes to strangers and anything involving the White Fang, who we're looking for, by the way. She finally paused for a breath and barreled onward. Weiss is nice though. She might seem prickly at first, but really, she's just a big softer. With a somewhat bemused sigh, the broken shinobi gave his nose a pinch and followed this mere slip of a girl as she hauled him off to who knows where. Was she skipping? Oh god, she was. Yet rather than annoy him, her endless stream of words almost made him smile. Something in him felt calm when those agitated silver eyes looked at him. As if she'd suppressed something, allowed him to come up for air. She was pure. Kind. Good. It made him want to break her. What? No. Stop that. Bad thoughts. People were not meant for breaking. Oh, but you're like Yang. Mistaking his silence for acceptance, Ruby continued to chatter happily as she tugged him around a corner. Just don't listen to her puns. And maybe don't make eye contact at first. Naruto blinked. Why? Don't make any eye contact. Am I allowed to ask why? He drawled dazed. Look, I, it's just, it's not like she tries to steal my friends. Ruby whined, squeezing his fingers. But it happens. A lot. I mean, she didn't steal John or anything, but something tells me she tried to steal you if she knew what you could do. When he only granted her a mystified look, she swung their joined hands back and forth. Because you? You're awesome. You get to throw nukes. Blow things up. She whispered the words as though they were somehow a national secret. Yan loves explosions. But I saw you first. So you're mine, um. Her pale face turned cherry red. I mean you're my friend first. No take backs. Got it? 
he wasn't sure he did. I? Nope. Can I just? Nope, she said. Do I even get to say? Nope, nope, nope. Naruto's mouth snapped shut with an audible click. Fine. Yay. She chirped happily, pulling him along. Onward, friend. Ah, uh, so that's how it was. He had no hope of escaping this girl. Something told him any attempt to extricate himself from her would just lead to her chasing him down. And while he could simply shrug her off, he didn't trust himself to do so without killing her. Even using the raisin shuriken earlier had been a risky maneuver. Something like that wouldn't go unnoticed. He'd have to leave Vale at the very least, and... Why do you look so sad? Naruto nearly tripped over his feet. Much to his chagrin, the fifteen-year-old had stopped short to look up at him. He willed himself to stare back at her, and not the ghastly ghost hovering just over her shoulders. That became decidedly more difficult when they crowded in. Naruto willed himself to focus as best his mangled mind would allow. If he stared at those specters over long, he'd just lose it again. Remarkably enough, Ruby still hadn't let go. Of his hand. That wasn't lost on him. Did she think he would bolt if she did? He had his own demons, to be sure. But as long as he ignored them, as long as he didn't look. Ah, look at her. One of them mused, leaning against the unaware girl. She's cute. Try to keep her alive, will you? Against his better judgment, the Jinchuriki turned to snap at the speaker. He immediately wished he hadn't. Damning Jade Eyes gazed back at him, framed by pale pink hair and a familiar red outfit he remembered all too well. He would have been forgiven for thinking her real, if it weren't for the gaping hole in the middle of her chest. Her mouth curved in a cruel smile as he looked on. She'd never worn such an expression. It was fake, just as false as the face before him. Another product of his own innate madness and all he'd been through. Replacing us so soon, Naruto? Her poisonous voice cooed at him. And with someone so young, whatever would Hinata say? Stop it, Sakura. Naruto gritted his teeth. You're not real. I'm not listening to this. La 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 la. Ignore us all you want. It doesn't change the fact that you failed US Dash. Naruto snarled, and his temper slipped its leash. He didn't see his free arm lash out at a dilapidated sign, but he certainly felt the metal fold under his grasp. With a start, he ripped it free. To her credit, Ruby barely batted an eyelash at the sudden outburst. She didn't show one iota of pity for the sign, even waited for him to start walking of his own volition before she moved ahead of him again. And if her hand was just a touch tighter in his own, the little huntress didn't say anything. Um, who's Sakura? She ventured as they walked. She's, no. It's nothing. He ground out vocally. Don't mind me. You're not going to steal Crescent Rose again, are you? Ruby wrinkled her nose at him and clutched her weapon close to her chest. Her accusation actually distracted Naruto for a moment because he walked right into a wall before he could recover. Why would I take your side again? He rubbed his nose. You tried to kill me the last time I did that. I dunno. Her deadpan expression didn't waver. You're the dirty side stealer, not me. I thought I was your friend. Naruto corked a brow, stifling a smile. You're both. She stomped a foot petulantly. Oh, she was just too much. Naruto's jaw popped back open and hung agape for several seconds before he managed to master himself again. He refused to call this girl simple because she wasn't. But she really was too pure. She knew full well that he had his problems, yet she wasn't afraid of them despite everything he'd said and done. It didn't matter if he nabbed her weapon either. She was perfectly willing to let that slide in favor of their newfound friendship, a friendship he had no say in. He'd been like that once. Was this what it felt like to have a sibling? With that, he couldn't help himself, he snorted. Soon enough it turned into chuckles, then guffaws. That opened the floodgates, and raucous laughter spilled forth. Ha ha. What what what? The young girl flailed madly. What did I do? Why are you laughing? Was it something I said? And don't you dare steal my baby. I will end you, buster. Naruto lost his grip on her hand and crashed backward, kicking at the air as he hooted in disbelief. By the log, that made it even worse. How could someone be so, so, adorable? 
His body doubled over with a loud whoop of laughter, unable to speak for fear of laughing even more. Alone, mirthful tear rolled down his cheek before he cobbled his wits back together. Even then, a few stray snickers escaped him as he stood, scrubbing at what he hoped weren't more tears with the back of his hand. They say dreams are meant to be caught. The words tumbled out of his mouth before he could hold them back. And true friends can never be bought. Eh? Ruby tilted her head nearly horizontal. Nothing. He snarked softly. Just talking to my friends. She chuckled nervously. Right. Your invisible friends. That I can't see. Naruto forced his gaze away from Sakura's sneering form. She flipped him off. Well, either he had quite the imagination, or he really was seeing and hearing his dead friends. Yup. He supplied for lack of a better word. His ally beamed. Neat. Indeed. Realizing this might go on for minutes or worse, Naruto forced a cough. What I mean to say is, you're a good friend, Ruby. Thank you for everything. Without thinking, he stooped down before her and began to pat her little head as one would a small, harmless kitten. With a scythe. You really are a good persona, aren't ya? His smile almost felt genuine. Be sure to hold on to that. Ruby's face turned as red as her namesake. Meep. Meep? That was a new sound, wasn't it? He hadn't heard that one before. To be fair, Naruto was no mind reader. He didn't see the gears turning in the huntress's head, wasn't aware of the butterflies frantically fluttering in her stomach, nor the ripples his simple gesture had made. How could he be? In this, it was all but impossible for him to understand the female mind on a good day. Ruby Rose? She operated differently than most. Give her cookies, and she would be your best friend for life. Show her the tiniest bit of kindness or affection. You weren't getting away. As such, he was utterly unaware of what he had done. Mine. He was even less aware of their audience. Minimai mean. Hey, do you hear something? Ruby asked suddenly. Minimai mean. Naruto perked up, his ears twitching. Now that she mentioned it, oh. Without thinking, he raised his gaze. As such, he saw the golden blur in the distance. Ruby made a strangled sound at his side, and at first, he didn't understand. With his keen eyes, he found himself forced to squint at the strange saffron specter in the distance. Not for long. Whatever it was, it was approaching. Rapidly. It looked like a girl. With red eyes. Why was her hair on fire? And why was she barreling straight at them? He was just about to ask what or who, when his vertically challenged ally keen quietly through her teeth. Ah, crap baskets. Ru, will you be? Friend of yours? Naruto gulped. Not quite. Ruby mirrored him. That would be young. My sister. Naruto's head snapped back towards the now fidgeting girl. Come again? I'm gonna kick your bloody ass, you piece of crap. Lovely. A misunderstanding. All right, that was young? Well, she certainly looked angry. Wait, did she think he'd kidnapped Ruby? Whatever the reason, she was definitely closer now. The leap didn't help. Her entire body seemed to burn as though lit within. A more foolish man would have stood their ground and taken that flying hook to the face like an absolute lemming. Naruto wasn't that insane yet. The moment he realized his fellow blonde's intentions, he stepped aside with liquid grace, leaving the madwoman to barrel past like a falling star. That should have been the end of things. It was not. Unfortunately, his well-timed evasion left Miss Shaolong with no recourse but to fly headlong into her startled sister with all the force of a meteor. Her aborted attack sent both siblings tumbling to the street in a whirl of arms and legs, but otherwise unharmed. Again, had that been the end of things, events might have ended on a pleasant note. Needless to say, they did not. Why? Ruby cried. Yum? When and how did you get kidnapped? What? No. The younger sister, why? Elped. It's not what it looks like. Not what it looks like. Red eyes narrowed on her. He looks super sketch. Did he touch you? Ruby turned beat red from her head to the very tips of her toes. Well, to be fair, he only kind of sort of petted me. Yang didn't seem to hear them. If she did, she was clearly too angry to care because she flew right at Naruto with a renewed roar. Die. 
Once again, Naruto didn't engage. An armored fist slammed at his face with furious speed, and he slapped it aside, leaving it to crunch harmlessly against the wall. In the nanosecond it took her to extricate her arm, he danced back, hands raised. A beat of silence passed between them, a beat in which his instincts howled at him to press the attack, but he didn't. He couldn't, no matter how the voices screamed at him, he'd seen Ruby's face. Some small sliver of sanity held out, and he lowered his arms. Now wait a second. This is all a big misunderstanding. I'll misunderstand your face. Yang snarled. That's not even a thing. Naruto swore. She didn't give him the chance to explain. Her gauntlets barked, and he nearly got a mouthful of dust for his troubles. He ducked under the next, forcing her to close within grappling distance, fists swinging. There should have been some form to her strikes, but there was none to be found here. Only anger, unfocused and wasted. Kakashi would have taken her apart in seconds. But he wasn't Kakashi, and he didn't want to hurt this girl. Just let her spend her anger and strength and calm down. A spike of ice jammed itself through the back of his brain, and he froze. Sloppy. A soft laugh pervaded his mind like tar, wet and cloying. Look at her. A woman's laughter. Is this what passes for a huntress these days? She wouldn't last a day in the Grimlands. Naruto nearly missed the next punch, felt it graze his chin as he tumbled up into a controlled crouch and came up swinging. His body still obeyed his commands, his mind was still his own, but the voice remained, echoing in on itself when he tried to distance himself from the fight. Damn it. After so long, he'd hoped he was rid of her. It had been nearly a year now. He thought himself free. From the whispers. From the temptation. From the dreams. What a fool he'd been. You couldn't get away from her. She was inescapable. He could no sooner escape her than he could tear out his own heart. Leave me alone, Salem. He hissed. I thought I got you out of my head. My dear boy, when will you learn? I never left. His response drew ire from all the wrong places. Which am I? Yang roared. Hmm, seems you've made her angry. No, not you. By some miracle, he caught one of her fists. Will you stop? When he opened his mouth to continue to explain, Yang reared back with single-minded fury and rammed her forehead into his. Naruto hissed in pain, and something ugly reared its head in his heart. Kill her. The voices took hold and began to chant at him. Kill her. Beat her so badly that she'll never recover. He could have killed her then and there. Part of him wanted to. So many openings no. Control. Look at you trying. To hold yourself back. She crooned in his ear. He felt icy fingers on his spine. Why limit yourself? You could be so much more. This time, Yang's punch was a blessing. It cleared his head. Gotcha. Now hold still so I can beat your face in. Will. You. Stop. Unwilling to harm her, he did the only thing he could think of. He gave her a hard shove. Somehow, that made the blonde even angrier. Naruto flinched, not from the next miss punch, but from the way the entire street shook beneath her first just now, asphalt shuddering ominously underfoot. It was old. It wouldn't hold, not if she kept swinging like that. He knew what would happen. They didn't. To make matters worse, Yang's furious assault had kicked up a cloud of dust, further throwing his vision off and adding to the confusion. It gave him a moment to think, to order his thoughts and pull back from the edge. If he simply refused to do anything, refused to fight, then surely they'd see. Whoosh. Without warning, his world exploded into fire, searing his skin before he could tumble away. And for the first time that afternoon, Naruto cried out in pain. Are you freaking kidding me right now? Not a heartbeat later, a girl in a white combat dress came flying at him through said smoke, rapier in hand. He didn't think when he batted it away with the flat of his palm and flung her away. She was too close for him to risk anything else, and again, he had no desire to hurt anyone. Less so when a blade slashed against his unprotected shoulders to bloody his black and ruin what remained of his jacket. Another one. Of course, there was a fourth member. Worse than the fire? Oh yes. This was much worse. Blue eyes snapped into scarlet slits, 
and the snarl he gave had her backpedaling like a drunken sailor. Naruto sucked in a breath through his teeth. They felt sharper than they should. Listen to me. I'm not here to fight any of you. A green thermos crashed down on his head. Is that a weapon? Salem mused thoughtfully. How quaint. Quite sorry about that, girls. A rapid voice cried out in triumph. Seems I was late. Naruto felt his shoulders begin to twitch, a muscle jumping in his jaw as the last of his control slipped through his fingers. Everything was happening so fast. He was dimly aware of a fifth party dancing out of his reach, but by then, his temper had already blazed out of his grasp. Red chakra began to burn through his veins, hot and heady. Still, he tried to hold himself back. He wasn't here to hurt. He had no quarrel with them. No reason to fight. Breathe. In. Out. In. He almost succeeded. Before Miss Crazy Fist hit him again. This time, his snarl didn't sound human. Yes, that's good. Give in. Blake. Weiss. Stop it. Distantly, he heard Ruby shout their names. It sounded so faint. Why was his world red? Why couldn't he think straight? Imagine his surprise when a towering scythe and the owner of said scythe leaped between him and the three combatants. He tensed, but the blunt end swung outward, away from him, to block the weapons that were even now aimed at his head. The resulting clang snapped him out of his daze, hauling his fractured psyche back from the edge, but only just. Ruby? What are you doing? Get out of the way, sis. Miss Rose? Have you lost your mind? Stop, stop, stop. The smaller girl cried, her voice cracking tearfully. He's not an enemy. He's my friend. This is all a big misunderstanding. He didn't kidnap me. A beat of silence passed between a lot of them until Zvi, forgotten until this very moment, trotted up to bark his agreement. As all engaged parties looked on, the little corgi placed his posterior firmly on the battered blonde's foot and looked up at him. Naruto blew out a sharp breath of disbelief, and Ruby actually had the temerity to smile. In a flurry of red petals, she sealed her scythe and swooped down to sweep the puppy up into her waiting arms. See? She rubbed her face into his coat. Svi thinks he's all right. That's a vote of confidence, isn't it? Naruto fought down a flinch and flitted backward before anyone could touch him again. Yang swore, then groaned into her palm. Oh god, he's faster than Ruby. Yeah, just try chasing him. Her sister groused blackly. Naruto's measured retreat turned into a full rout. Ultimately, that was enough to break the ice. Not all at once, mind you, but as the teary huntress looked on, her companions and Professor Oblek gradually relaxed. Behind her, Naruto stood rigid, his eyes flickering through several shades. Blue, gold, red? Huh. Was that a semblance or something? Weird. When he made no move to bolt again, she tentatively reached out to grasp his sleeve, tethering him in place. He flashed what might have been a smile at her, but it emerged as more of a grimace. He wasn't happy. Gods, she wasn't happy either. And it made her angry. Ruby didn't like being angry. It made her heart hammer and her pulse pound, but more than that, her team hadn't listened to her. They'd attacked someone who had just been trying to help, someone who hadn't even attacked back. Did he not have aura? No, that made no sense. She'd seen what he did to those grim. How could you do that and not have aura? He was hurt. He was bleeding. Rubes, we get it. Seeing her anger, Yang's shoulders slumped in defeat. We were in the wrong, all right? We're sorry. No, you don't get away with just that. A finger furiously stabbed her nose. Bad Yang. Bad. What am I, a dog or something? came her sister's bemused snort. You're worse than Zvi. He gets treats. You don't. The aforementioned corgi woofed. Blake chuckled. And as for the rest of you, that proved a mistake because now those silver eyes found her and Weiss immediately thereafter, burning with the intensity of a thousand suns. Even poor Professor Oblek soon found himself the subject of that fierce searing gaze. Of course, Ruby ruined her fearful image by stomping about on the ruined ground, but they weren't about to tell her that. She looked cuter this way. More of a raw fear me, rather than an I will tear off your head sort of anger. 
Given the choice between the two, she'd gladly choose the former. Ruby had a scythe for crying out loud, and she had no desire to be on the business end of it. Weiss. Blake. I told you to stop. Why didn't you? The heiress stepped in. We thought you were under duress. Why would I be captured? Ruby's arms flailed. I can handle myself. Something shook. Ruby bristled. Weiss froze outright. Well, crap. Jan gulped. That can't be good. Bublek positively cackled. Aha! I knew it! Underground! No one had a chance to ask Oblek what the devil he had said. Echoing that statement, the very earth rumbled ominously underfoot. Naruto growled. This is all your fault, you know that? I blame all of you. No sooner had he spoken than the sundered ground gave way beneath them. And so it was that the six of them and one puppy fell shrieking into a gaping pit. Needless to say, events would escalate rather rapidly after that most spectacular disaster. Hate. It writhed and twisted in Adam's gut like an angry serpent, longing for a target to sink its fangs into. But there was nothing down here in the dark. No target to strike, none worthy, at any rate. Nothing but dull metal walls, his brothers and sisters of the White Fang, and those two humans, whom he'd been forbidden to kill. Spirits that made it worse. The longer he waited, the more his hatred grew, twining in his thoughts. Toward himself. His life. His choices. He was no mere grunt to be ordered about. He was a fighter, a leader, a warrior. Yet here he was, waiting like a hapless soldier. Towards Blake. He wanted to forgive her, but he could not bring himself to do it, not after what she'd done to him. This was all her fault, of course. It was only natural that she pay for what she'd done. But Blake wasn't here, and his thoughts availed him not. So he waited, thus he hated. He hated trains. He hated being here. Hated waiting on that insipid human Torchwick. Hated his minion, who watched him like a hawk. And above all else, he loathed listening to Cinder. But he dared not defy her. Not with those powers. She'd made her position clear, and he was helpless but to obey. Foul creature that one, even for a human. Still, what was the point in him being here? His men were nearly finished with their preparations for the breach long ago, all that remained was to clear out a few rogue grim that might otherwise impede the plan. Adam was not amused. When the explosions hit, when the train started moving, he was almost grateful for this most blessed distraction. His men were shouting something in the distance, something about an ambush, an attack of some sort. Never had Adam Taurus needed something so badly, and never known until he received it. Snatching up wilt and blush, he climbed to his feet with a pleased growl. Finally, something to take his seething frustrations out on. He turned just in time to see a faint streak of orange. No. More. A lot of orange. An army of orange. Scratch that, make it a sea of orange. What the hell? Go, go, go! Move those knees! Naruto roared. Faster! Hurry up! What is it with you and knees? Ruby wailed. She received a shove for her protests. Move! Next car! Faster, damn it! People were easy to break. Human or faunus, it didn't matter, male or female, everyone's bones broke under enough pressure. There was no time for thought or guilt here, only movement only the never-ending whirl of his arms and legs as he did his best to advance. In another life, he might have been merciful, might have sought to deliver non-lethal blows. Now, he didn't hesitate. The only thing he put first was the girl by his side. Her side was a red dervish of motion, carving and cutting anyone and anything before her. It served as a subtle reminder. For all her smiles and sunbeams, Ruby Rose could fight. So could he. Everything was moving so quickly, though that might have been the train's fault. They hadn't fallen to their deaths as they'd feared. On the contrary, they'd tumbled right into a white fan nest and been on something of a running battle ever since. Complete with an exploding train, cars and grim and all. Weiss, Blake, and Jan had gone below in an attempt. To disable said train, hopefully to prevent the damn thing from crashing. That had been, minutes ago? Hours? 
time lost its meaning somewhere after the fifth wave. Something was delaying them down there, which left the rest of them to run pell-mell across it and tear through the white fang. Oblek had fallen back to the rear to do gods know what which left Ruby beside Naruto and a small army of shadow clones at their back to cut a bloody swathe forward. Ordinarily this wouldn't have been a problem. Quality ought to beat numbers every time. In theory. Try telling that to the white fan. There were just so many of the little buggers. Robot! Ruby's yelp was the only warning Naruto needed. Then a towering mech imploded as a snarling raisin shuriken rent its chassis to atoms and left the wreckage to tumble into the tracks. The train didn't stop. Neither did he. A man's throat crumpled under his grip before his body was flung down to join the rest. Still, the train didn't stop. A masked woman got in his way and received a rousing roundhouse courtesy of a clone, flinging her off the train with a fearful shriek before she vanished into the black tide of grim below. The damn thing just wouldn't stop. Naruto winced at the sight but kept going. Onward. Ever onward. There was no time to stop. So many. So, so many. Too many of them. Their very presence muddled his thoughts, and only more tumbled into the tunnel from above with each train car lost. He tried not to focus on them, to ignore the way they tried to clamor up after him. The way all those red eyes locked on him, and him alone. Oh, they'd devour whatever he flung their way, but their attention never wavered from him. Somehow that made everything worse. So much worse. He flung a raisin shuriken down at the mob, to no avail. More poured in from above. Always more. He'd exhaust himself before he wiped them all out. Could he bring down the tunnel? No, that would just bury the lot of them. How cute. Salem cooed. My babies like you. Naruto hissed, the plan lost. Shut up! Die, human! A chainsaw smashed into his side as a burly faunus tried to cut him in half while he was distracted. With his sage mode active, Naruto barely felt the impact, but it was the catalyst he needed. His arm snaked out, grabbed the snarling blade, and snapped it like a matchstick. Then the red menace that was Ruby Rose descended upon the faunus with the whoop of a war cry. Not a heartbeat later, the giant was flung shrieking into the horde with the rest of his brethren. He did not return. This was getting them nowhere, and they were running out of track. Damn it. You alright? Ruby's voice plucked him from his guilt. Naruto grunted, pulling a stray shard of metal from his side. I'll live. She hummed and darted to him in a flurry of red petals. What are you made of? Flesh and bone? Naruto frowned, the question lost on him. Same as you? Why? I don't get it. She never had a chance to answer him. We're running out of track. Bablek's distant shout landed like lightning, and he turned to see the end of the tunnel in the distance. No. No, no, no. They told him where this tunnel led. What was on the other side? What would happen next? Even a madman could put two and two together. If an explosive train crashed at this speed, with this many grim behind it, it could be nothing good. It would burst right into the city. All hell would break loose. Countless innocents would die. No. Not again. Never again. He didn't think. He simply moved in a streak of orange. Past the grim. Past the white fang. Past his friend. Past everyone and everything he'd begun to hold dear. When he surged past Ruby, she yelped at him. Hey, wait! What are you doing? Stopping this train. Leaping in front of a train was the worst thing he could have done. Trying to stop a train with explosives wedged in every car? Even more so. He'd never done anything like this before, even when his mind was his own. He simply never thought to try, never sought to test the upper limits of his strength. Never made the attempt. He had no way of knowing if he would succeed or not. Yet even so, he stepped onto the tracks. Was this a bad idea? Probably. The train didn't give him time to second-guess himself. Why are you doing this? Her voice was a feather's brush in his mind. Why throw your life away? Wind whipped at Naruto's face, and for a moment, he found himself not knowing the reason. A tiny memory flashed through his mind, Ruby's smiling face, beaming up at him. Because you're my friend. Gold eyes smoldered with a scarlet spark as he steadied himself. 
Naruto's mind might have been broken, his body altered, his psyche possibly shattered beyond repair, but there was one thing he would always keep. Not pride. Not hate. Not even fear. It was a smaller emotion, a tiny ember of flame that he still stoked even now. Hope. The belief that there would always be light at the end of the tunnel, that things would be better than they were now. He clung to that belief, even here, in what might have been his final moments. For my friend. He raised his hands to meet the train. And then there was pain, bright, red, and fierce. His bones nearly buckled, but for a single fateful instant, he held his ground. Then momentum smashed him backward with a dull roar, and it was all he could do to hold on. By some miracle, he managed to cling to the main car, even as his sandals shredded themselves away under the friction and the hulk of metal threatened to grind him to dust beneath. He hadn't fought this hard in months. He was out of touch. Out of practice. Now he was trying to stop a train. He felt the rage come on, and this time he didn't fight back, he embraced it. When the change came, he laughed and welcomed it with open arms like a long-lost friend. Power and strength coursed through a weary body, bringing with it a blessed surge of red chakra, and something else. Pale blonde hair turned an ashen white. Gold eyes became a wild red. Tan skin sizzled black. And for a single, glorious moment, he could think again. Control it. Suppress it. Channel your anger. Focus. Don't let anything slip through. Nine smoldering tails of scarlet burst out of his back as his body twisted and grew, tearing through flesh and muscle to be born, writhing and twisting like sibilant snakes. Three of them surged forward to join his faltering hands as they pushed against the main train car. Two wedged themselves into the ground alongside his bloodied feet, digging great furrows in the earth as they sought to halt his backward slide. Two more elongated and embedded themselves into the walls, and so the final pair shot into the ceiling overhead in a final desperate attempt to slow down, seeking yet another handhold where none was to be found. Muscles tearing, bones shredding, still he held on. His crude web was tearing. Faltering. No. He refused to fail. You dare? Someone shouted at him from atop the main car, and he thought he saw a flash of red and black descending on his head. Ruby? No. Not Ruby. This one was larger. T. Aller. Male. Ignore him. One of his tails whipped out to backhand his would-be attacker before he could try to skewer him. Naruto didn't see him sail back toward the train, didn't pay him any more heed than one might an annoying ant. All of his attention was firmly focused on the main car, pushing against it with all his might. It wasn't enough. Even transformed, he still gave ground, however slowly. Stop, he begged, praying to whatever god was out there. Stop. Please stop. Don't let me fail again. Pain flared in his stomach, but still he fought on. Naruto roared. Stop, goddammit. He strained with all his might. Pushed with everything he had and more. Without warning, his world burst into white light. Red had always been Ruby's favorite color. Ever since she was small, she'd adored all things crimson and scarlet. Her cape was red. Her scythe was red. Her hair had red highlights. Strawberries were red. She loved watching Yang's gaze snap into the color. All told, she liked red. Red was a beautiful shade like no other. Red reminded Ruby of her mother. Yes, all told, red was her favorite color. She never thought she'd be afraid to see it in the eyes of another. But she now did. Up. A low voice growled in her ear. You need to wake up. Her first thought that something had gone terribly, horribly wrong came when she woke up. Which was bad. Waking up implied that someone or something had knocked her out in the first place. Huntresses weren't supposed to get knocked out. Huh. Weird. She didn't remember taking a nap either. Or being picked up. Or being carried. Because someone was doing precisely that. Carrying her. Right now. Someone was carrying her and moving very, very fast, because she could feel her head slammed against an armored chest with each step. Bleary silver eyes drifted open with a groan. Ha! Huh! She coughed and tilted her head, expelling a plume of dust. What happened? Where? She could see the rest of her team scattered on the ground in varying degrees of consciousness, 
which only made everything all the more confusing. Weiss was propped up against a stone outcropping, Svi curled up at her hip. Somehow, her partner still caught Murdenaster when it sailed her way. She didn't hesitate. Didn't ask questions. She just nodded at whoever was holding Ruby and started picking herself up. Ruby craned her little head as far as she could and saw Jan hunched over what might have been the remnants of her last meal. Get up. The voice cracked at her sister, snapping like a whip. You can puke later. Gods, you're an asshole, you know that? Came the groan. Sass later. He snarled. Fight now. Get. Up. Despite her snark, she still stood. You still owe us answers. You'll have them. Ruby's jaw clicked open. Yan, listening to someone? Was the apocalypse nigh? Compared to the rest of the team, Blake was much better off, and that she was actually standing when Ruby finally found her. Unlike the others, she flinched when she saw who or what was holding her teammate. She looked like she wanted to bolt, but she stood her ground. Something metallic rasped in Ruby's ears. Found your weapon, too, he grunted. Catch. Thanks. Despite her fear, the faunus neatly caught Gamble Shroud when it was flung in her direction. She looked like she was considering using it on him, but held back for reasons Ruby didn't understand. By now, she had begun to realize just who was doing all this, but she was still too out of it to connect all the dots. She barely reacted when she was finally laid down on the ground beside her. This, it didn't make any sense. Who was carrying her? What the heck was going on? Why, no. Wait. She remembered now, and the memory brought on a pang of dread. The train. Despite their best efforts, the white fan must have breached the street above. She dimly recognized the streets of Vale, and the civilians gawking at them in the distance. All right. That made sense. The explosion must have knocked a lot of them out. Which meant... The ground rumbled treacherously underfoot. Oh no. They're coming. The voice came on again. Get up, Red. Ruby forced herself to look up, willed her eyes to focus and see her savior. A pair of hooded scarlet slits awaited her. They didn't belong to Yam. Yam was on the ground. Yeek. Her blood turned to ice as she beheld the one holding her. Whatever it was, it was large, towering well above six feet, wearing skin so dark red it might as well have been a bloody ebony. She couldn't tell if it was human, grim, or some ghastly abomination of the two. A messy mane of white hair framed a humanoid face and red eyes with dark scara, three whisker marks on each cheek. And those teeth. They were human, but they looked far too sharp for her liking. He stood she in odd plates of polished white bone bearing red markings. Worse, nine crimson, things bristled from his back like jagged spines, rippling and stirring at the slightest movement he made. Then he raised both hands toward her, palms splayed. When faced with such a beast, Ruby reacted the only way she could. She shrieked in surprise and flared her semblance to escape, leaving her captor with a face full of rose petals. See? Jan groaned into one of her gauntlets. I knew this would happen. Rubes, calm down. All hell should have broken loose. In a sense it did. Three Beowulves burst from the gaping tear in the earth below and were promptly eradicated before they could reach her. He didn't even move. Those things on his back twitched, and they died. There was no other word for it. Ruby barely noticed. She was too busy backpedaling, trying to make sense of things backward. Her mind gibbered madly, frantically trying to come up with a solution. Where was her weapon? Had she lost it somewhere in the blast? Blast it all, she needed her baby. What? Who the heck is that? Once again, her captor didn't pursue. As she skittered backward like a drunken crab, that thing paused. Cocked its head. On the contrary, it wholeheartedly ignored her and turned to face the breach. No, not the breach. It was staring at one of the train cars now. Grabbing it. Somehow, the sight of it manhandling the train what was left of it back into the opening left Ruby even more terrified. He just picked up one car after another and slammed them down over the opening. Just like that. As if it weighed no more than a feather. A muffled grow. Elle reached her ears, sullenly reminding her of the horde of Grimm on the other side, but she couldn't bring herself to think of them. She could only see those red eyes. 
A thin line of steam escaped its mouth as it turned to face her. She felt like a sheared sheep without her weapon, and if she was a sheep, then this was most assuredly a wolf. Why wasn't her team reacting to any of this? Why was Jan smiling? Why wasn't she defending her? This didn't make any sense. When it approached her, she tensed. She expected it to snap and snarl at her. A clawed hand descended, and Ruby flinched in a panic, prepared for pain, pain that never came. Pat. 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 Ruby opened her eyes. Meep, she said eloquently. Her head tilted of its own volition as clawed fingers gently patted her head with great care, making a motion she was all too familiar with. The heat emanating from that palm should have been scalding. It should have seared her skin, burned her face. But it didn't. She was exposed. Vulnerable. It could have torn her to pieces before she escaped. But it didn't. And she knew those battered orange trousers. One of those crimson, tails, delivered crescent rose to her hands, and Ruby took it meekly, unsure of how to respond, wary of that very toothy smile. Uh, whiskers? She asked. Is that you? His head jerked in a stiff nod. Long story. That didn't cut it. Not by a half. I you how? Naruto flung up his arms and swore loudly. Long. Story. In a strange twist of fate, Yan actually came to his rescue this time. Sorry about that, sis. Whiskers can't really talk at the moment, so I'll just tell you the good bits before he goes bonkers, yeah? Her sister looked almost sheepish as she came to Naruto's side. She even laid a hand on his shoulder. After the explosion, this guy kinda helps Vi dig us out of the rubble. Her cheeks took on a pink tinge as she averted her gaze. And our weapons. Oblek too. All eyes turned to the still prone form of Dr. Oblek sprawled in the street. He hadn't budged an inch. The man actually pumped a fist into the air and drank from his thermos. Capital, work that. Now could someone please help me? They most assuredly did not. Regardless. Weiss coughed. Setting his appearance aside, he appears to be an ally. Appears? Naruto growled. So we're withholding judgment. She flicked a gaze at him and grimaced at the resultant snarl. For now. Well, he did carry Yang and Ruby out like a pair of blushing brides. Blake folded both arms before her chest. I'm sure that has nothing to do with it. Ruby made a noise that strangled itself somewhere between a squawk and a squeak. Yang's reaction proved itself a bit more, volatile by comparison. Aqua Orb seared an angry red. You're dead to me, Blake. The faunus pointedly hid her scroll behind her back. Did you take pictures? Yang yelped. I can neither confirm nor deny. The blonde blew out a breath. I mean, yeah, Whiskers looks weird now but he tried to stop the train. Then he helped us. Yang slapped the hybrid's back, eliciting an annoyed grunt. And look, he isn't attacking. Another slap. Another grunt. See? Not even a twitch. He's being a good sport about this. Gotta count for something, right? Huh. Huh. Naruto favored her with a long-suffering look but otherwise remained silent which left Ruby to process what the blue hell was going on. Naruto looked like a grim, but Naruto was quiet. Ruby blinked again. Once. Twice. Thrice. Was it really that simple? Naruto stomped impatiently but otherwise remained motionless. He didn't attack. Didn't roar. Didn't even blink. Moreover, he had helped them, going so far as to pull them out of the rubble, retrieve their weapons, and temporarily plugged the big honking hole in the street. It wouldn't last, of course, she could already see it trembling. But she could also hear the alarms in the street and, more importantly, see the bullheads in the sky and the Atlas battleships close behind. It didn't take much to put two and two together. What were they waiting for, then? She had already called John, who had in turn called others, which had alerted the Atlas contingent standing guard in the sky. The White Fang wanted a massacre. They had gotten one. They were probably getting torn to shreds by the Grim down there. Whoever was left was likely taking cover inside the trains and would come boiling out the moment the Grim broke through. Meanwhile, the five of them were in a unique position to stop those bastards before they could build up steam. They were armed, they were rested, 
and they had had a chance to recover. They also had Naruto. Oh. Hell. Yes. A switch flipped somewhere in the back of her brain. Just like that, the ice in her veins shattered, leaving her blood pumping again, leaving the tension draining right out of her. Right. Okay. This thing was clearly still Naruto. So what if he looked a little... Grimmer? Grimmish? Was that a word? Oh gods, Yang was going to have a field day with the puns once this was done. Just the thought made her shudder. Still, it wasn't as if Naruto had actively been keeping secrets from her. She had never asked. And he had killed three Grimm that had been trying to kill her. Ruby was a simple girl, all things considered. If someone killed her enemies, then surely said someone couldn't be her enemy, right? Her logic was bulletproof. All right, it really wasn't, but still. Besides, if Yang and the others were all right with it, so what could possibly go wrong? Abruptly, Naruto twitched. They're here. Ruby didn't need to ask what he meant by that. When the earth shook again, Team RWBY was more than prepared for it this time around. In that, they had already leaped well back before a giant freaking King Taiji to burst through the barricade. Countless smaller Grimm rushed in through the gap it had created, some even scaling over its writhing bulk to get at them. Once again, the four of them scattered. Naruto, on the other hand? Not so much. He leaped right at the Grimm. Dumbass. Yang roared. Again, not so. In a single blur, the blonde leaped onto a lamppost and vaulted forward with a howl. To its credit, the serpent saw him coming. It just wasn't quick enough to get out of the way. Alighting upon the paler of the two heads, the blonde lashed out with his tails and wrenched its mouth open. In that same instant, his jaw cracked open as he continued to hold the beast's maw apart, sharp canines yawning wide with barely disguised glee. Click. Ruby heard a faint pop, even from her own distance. For a fleeting sliver of a second, she glimpsed the faintest swelling of light in the blonde's teeth. Oh, that couldn't be good. For the Grimm, or them. Maybe they should get back. Well back. Not a heartbeat later, the world imploded into red light, thrice as loudly as the last time, so intense that the air itself seemed to scream in pain. Ruby recoiled against it. When she turned to look, only the serpent's tail remained. The second head had simply ceased to be with the rest of the body and, quite a few unlucky Grimm. Naruto rode the dissolving tail down and kicked out with his legs in a nimble backflip that carried him back to her side. Her. Not Yam or Blake, or even Weiss, but hers. The thought made Ruby preen as she cut apart a Beowulf. Just a little. Oops. How silly of her. She had forgotten her friend was a walking nuke. Also hers. Totally hers. If he could do that to only a few Grimm, why the hell were they holding him back? In the end, only one word came to mind. Yan noticed her smile. Damn. She whistled. I called dibs. Too late. Ruby crowed. Mine. Naruto. The hybrid glanced at her curiously. Yes? Ruby stabbed a finger towards the encroaching horde. Smash. Naruto surged forward with a laugh that would have put Tyrion Kalos to shame. Red and white. Rip yellow and black and do not hurt do not attack tear naruto chanted the poem like a mantra in his mind as he fought through the streets of vale muscles screaming at him with every movement sanity stretched to the brink keep going don't stop he couldn't to hesitate now meant death or worse losing himself to the raging storm that was his own madness thankfully there were plenty of enemies to sate him an unlucky Ursa tried to jump him when his back was turned, his mind preoccupied. Mistake. A flick of his tails cleaved the beast in twain and sent its dissolved halves tumbling past him. Another arced up in a scarlet blur, disemboweling a stray nevermore that had tried to swoop down on Weiss. The heiress jumped as it sailed past her, taken aback by the sight just as much as how he had done it, but she restrained herself. Naruto ignored her and raged onward, skirting a startled boy with a shield to tackle a death stalker and drive it into the street. Hone claws slashed across its face and tail, leaving its body to crumble beneath him as he moved on. Don't hurt them. Once more, 
His broken psyche latched onto those four aforementioned colors with all its might, clinging to them like a lifeline. They carried him into battle, urging the last shattered shards of sanity on a precarious raft that might fall apart at any moment. But it held. For now. Now that Grimm were upon them, it was all he could do to keep his focus, to turn his red-tainted vision upon his enemies rather than his allies. He shouldn't be alive after that landing. Shouldn't be breathing at all, let alone moving. Yet here he was. Here he was, fighting alongside humanity. That was surprising, to say the least. He had been prepared for violence when he had first transformed back in the tunnel. Shouts and screams, at the very least. Condemnations again when he had pulled them out of the rubble and given them back their weapons. But Yang hadn't attacked him. Blake had been terrified, but she too stayed her hand. Weiss appeared to have given up by the time he resuscitated her. Oh, they were watching him, of that much he was certain, but he fully expected he would have to fight his way free in the aftermath. Perhaps Oblek was to blame for his stay of execution. Scientific curiosity and whatnot. Who could say? At least the man was finally upright and fighting again. Thank the log for small mercies. And then there was Ruby Rose. He'd seen her fear. It was a heady thing. But she'd overcome it so quickly. How? Why wasn't she? Why weren't they afraid of him? Hop! A scarlet streak alighted on his back for a fleeting second, followed by the faintest weight. Without a thought, he arched one of his tails to give her a boost. She accepted the momentum he'd given her with a happy chirp and used it to ram her side through the throat of a particularly large nevermore. The sight gave him pause for a moment. In that, he actually ceased his rampage to watch her leap from the dying bird and hurl herself at a cluster of beowulfs. wolves. She even waved at him as she fell. Bah. She'd be fine. Someone shot him in the back, and his body whipped around with a sibilant snarl. A boy with dark hair and pink eyes flinched as he lowered his weapons. Ah. There was the fear he'd come to expect. It would be so easy to kill him. To rip and tear. No! Snarling at himself as much as his instincts, Naruto wrenched his body back from the brink and barreled into a beringel before it could crush a civilian. He didn't see the second rise up behind him until a giant fist crashed down on his head. Rage blossomed anew in him, and he tore the offending arm off, grabbed a nearby Borbatusk by its tusks, and summarily beat the offender to death with its bony carapace. Someone was foolish enough to take a shot at him as he did so, but he daren't look at him for fear of losing control. From there, everything became a blur. Rip and tear. Break and shatter. Shock and scatter. Sharpened claws flicked out, divesting a towering Beowulf of one arm, caught the other, then blasted its head away before it could try to bite out at yet another hapless innocent. He ignored the woman's shriek and flung himself back into the melee, fighting against the adrenaline coursing through his veins. Don't hurt the hunters. No. Absolutely not. His will remained ironclad, united on that front. But those with masks, the beasts, they were for killing. Crushing. Rip and tear. Kill the masked ones. Crush the grim. Crush the white fang. Crush all those who dared to hurt him. Rip and tear. Ruby wanted him to smash? That was just fine. He'd grind their enemies to paste. Nine more Ursa and a lone Deathstalker fell to his claws before he realized something was wrong. More had joined the fray now, other hunters and strange-smelling soldiers that reeked of metal and death. Those he ignored. They didn't ignore him. Some took potshots at him from afar, but thankfully none attempted to engage him in melee combat, least of all when it became apparent that he was focused on anyone wearing a mask or of the bestial variety. That suited him just fine. He wasn't sure he could rein himself and if they all took it into their heads to attack him. Which only left him more prey. What the hell is that thing? He heard someone, a girl, shout over the chaos. Don't care, came a boy's shout. As long as it stays the hell away. Oh, Renny, did you see what he just did to that guy? Not now, Nora. Perhaps if Naruto had been in his right mind, he would have noticed that the voices in his head had gone strangely silent. Salem hadn't uttered so much as a peep since he transformed. Surely she was up to something, scheming one of her schemes. He didn't know if he was playing right into her hand. 
he no longer cared. There was only the enemy before him. So long as he kept his distance and didn't engage, then hopefully the hunters would leave him be. Someone smashed him over the head with a mace. Die, you freak! This sudden ambush didn't so much stun as it did startle the scarred shinobi because there was no pain to be had at all. That might have something to do with said mace breaking over the bony plate of his head. The damn thing, shattered. Like so much glass. His attacker was left clutching the sundered haft of what must have been a mighty weapon indeed, judging by its size and the amount of debris littered at their feet. It was certainly a valiant attack, all things considered. Valiant, stupid, and foolish. Incredulous scarlet eyes turned to gaze down at the armor-clad, brown-haired boy who was even now gawping at him. Carden Winchester had all of half a second to realize his peril. Then he ran like hell. He could have slaughtered him any number of ways. He chose not to. Seriously? Naruto croaked. Oddly enough, the attack brought back a memory deep within the ruined recesses of his mind. He remembered someone else with a weapon. Not a mace, but a sword. Someone different. Stronger. Dangerous. A boy with red hair and a mask. Someone he managed to avoid. Someone he hadn't seen since. So where? Someone screamed in the distance. Blake. Someone else shrieked as well, but in anger. Yang. Eyes blazing like twin coals in his skull, the monster stormed forward. Everything had come undone. Adam fought with singular rage and fury, blind to all else but the battle before him and his own anger. It wasn't fair. None of this was. All his plans, all his ambitions had come to naught. His men nearly routed, the grim all but destroyed by the hunters. Ironwood's men descending upon Vale, and by extension him, like a swarm of angry fire ants. It wasn't supposed to be this way. If only he hadn't fallen prey to Cinder's machinations. If only he hadn't gotten on that train. In another world, another place, another time, things might have been different. It could still be so. He wanted to believe it was so. Needed to. Wilt and Blush weaved an intricate pattern before him as he fought, wrath lending strength to his strikes. They were irritating. His love barely put up a fight, if it weren't for the blonde. The breach was successful, in a tentative sense of the word. But for that thing. That creature stifling the grim with a last-minute barricade. With so few survivors, he'd been forced to cut his way to freedom. There was no way out of the tunnel but forward. Through the train. And so the Grimm had been unleashed, to the terror of Vale, and five furious warriors. Drawing Blake away in the chaos had been easy. Too easy. He hadn't thought that someone might notice her absence and follow. Now there were too many hunters. Worse, Atlas was closing in. He could feel the news tightening around his neck even now. It made his eye burn and left him all the angrier. A wise man would have run away. Lived to fight another day. Adam was many things. Strong. Passionate. Determined. But wise. No, wisdom had never. Been one of his strengths. So he fought on until, there. Finally, an opening. Sweeping Wilt to the inside, he ripped through Blake's aura, added her weapon aside with blush, and drove her to the floor. His bloody blade stabbed downward immediately, slicing through the flesh of her thigh. It wasn't the mortal wound he desired. Blasted Blake managed to twist aside at the last instant to prevent a debilitating wound, but it made her cry out and wounded her all the same. Of course, that just set the blonde one off. As he'd intended. Let her go. No. He scoffed. She lunged at him in blind fury, the fool. In her anger, she had left herself wide open to his blade. He could clearly see where she would strike the way she had overextended her arm in a single, wild lunge. Just as he could see where he would finish her. Imbecile. In her haste to save her precious. Comrade. She had thrown her life away. In a single sharp movement, he sheathed the wilt and let his semblance flare. One swing. More than enough to end her. Adam's blade never left its sheath. Rather, they were unable to, for five firm fingers found his wrist and bit down with bone-crushing force. Knock, knock. A low, angry growl hissed in his ear. Against his better judgment, Adam slowly turned. Who's there? He hissed, seeing red eyes. 
Pain. He had only just begun to scowl when clenched knuckles barreled into the side of his face, splintering his mask like so much glass, sending shattered shards of porcelain slashing across his exposed visage. Time seemed to slow, the world dragging itself to a crawl. He was still reeling when twin hands clawed hands, closed around his head and dragged his skull down into a rising knee. The Faunus's nose burst in a grisly spray of red, but he scarcely felt it, because his body chose that moment to inform him of Yang's fist now wedged in his gut. She sneered up at him, her own eyes just as red as the beast he was fighting. Damn it! He had forgotten about the girl. And she smiled. Gotcha. Sure. Rarark. That was all Adam heard before Yang activated her semblance and bore him down into the ground like an almighty jackhammer. Aura flared and buckled around the blow, two ribs cracking under the strain. But he was free to move. The other one had let go of him and left his ally within striking distance. Fine. He would kill this bitch first then. Will darked upward with a mournful howl, only to be met with a writhing red maelstrom of fury. Blast it. Adam was good. Adam might be very, very good. Adam couldn't deflect ten simultaneous attacks from ten different angles. Sure enough, one of those limbs slipped through his guard and got him by the wrist. His eyes branded and otherwise widened in comprehension, and he tried to cut it away. Too late. A broken gurgle fled from his lips as that thing seized him and flung him over the shoulder of its master. He was still soaring backward when Ember Selica barked thunderously. This time his aura didn't quite hold up. Momentum seized him and dragged him across the street like a doll made of straw, or a flaring as he bounced and skidded along the street. He recovered quickly, but the moment was lost. By the time he crawled to his feet, he found the two of them standing against him. Blake was well behind them, still prone in her recovery, but the unspoken gesture said volumes about their intent. They weren't even paying attention to the remaining Grim. They only had eyes for him. Human and monster alike, allied against him. Unbidden, his mind conjured up an old fairy tale. Beauty and the Beast. Ha! Huh. Instinct demanded he retreat. Rage compelled him to stay, to stand his ground in the face of insurmountable odds. Filthy humans. He snarled, propelling himself upright with. A swing. What does she even see in you lot? Uh, everything you're not? Yang bounced upright, arms raised. Let's get em, Whiskers. Screw you, came the retort. You tried to smash my face in earlier. Erm, let bygones be bygones. She shrugged hopefully. Not a chance? He hissed. Your ass is still mine. Promises, promises. Adam bridled. Will you two stop flirting, Dash? It was precisely the wrong thing to say because they rounded on him, and he saw stars. In that moment of blindness, Naruto went left. Yan simply surged to the right. Adam cursed them both. Twin hands closed on either side of his face, deafening him to the world. He slashed wildly, the blade biting through Aura, to no avail. When Yang dodged back with a hiss, a lone tail found her shoulder and pushed her forward, throwing weight behind her strike. When he tried to gore the boy in retaliation for his aid, one of her fists slammed into his side and diverted Wilt's course, sending it skittering against the street. They covered for each other. Damn them. They barely knew one another. Damn them both. Yet each fought nearly in sync with the other. Damn them all to hell. Just like he and Blake had, once upon a time, so very long ago. Rage ignited, Adam lunged and sheathed his wilt in an attempt to use his semblance again only to realize he had lost blush somewhere in the madness. No, there it was. He glimpsed it held aloft in one of the creature's cold tails. As if sensing his regard, the abomination flung it out of his reach, the sheath's absence depriving him of his ranged weapon. Still, he fought on. Why won't you die? Distantly, he became aware of the silence as he fought. Everything had grown dull and muted, leaving only his own hammering pulse with him. He glimpsed other bullheads touching down in the distance. Saw more and more troops arriving in the square as the last of his men were cut down, mopped up alongside the Grim. Was that Ironwood himself, stepping out from one of the larger aircraft? Surely he was hallucinating. If not, he liked to imagine that the vaunted general was scowling. Unfortunately, this distraction cost him dearly. 
Those ghastly tails surged forward, sweeping him off his feet in a moment of weakness. For a fleeting instant, he was weightless. Free of all worries in the world. Too late, Adam saw the vermilion sphere rushing toward his face. He looked past it, over it, and saw Blake's golden eyes. In his final moments, Adam Torres smiled. By the gods, he had become so tired. Why was he even fighting? If this was to be his death, then he deemed it a good one. A fair end all things considered, perhaps not quite the one he deserved, but quick nonetheless. He never felt a Rasengan smash through his depleted aura to find his chest. Never heard it grind through his flesh and bone as Ember Celica had failed to do before. His overtaxed body failed him from the moment of impact. Never saw himself buckle and crash into the crater left behind by the blast. Gods, this hurt. Death or no, it certainly felt like it. Yet somehow, he still thought of two fateful words. I'm sorry. They say death brings a man peace, if not enlightenment. Perhaps this was that. Was he dying? Who could say? Still, Adam held on to consciousness as long as he could, stubborn to the last. And in his reward? Someone held his hand. Someone stood over him. Someone, Blake, spoke softly to him, fingers stroking his scalp in what he perceived to be his final moments. So that's how it was. Only here and now did she show him some form of her love. Had he ever had it to begin with? Did he lose it long ago? Gods, he'd been so angry with her when she'd left him. Terribly, horribly angry. Why? Why didn't he chase after her from the first? Why didn't they talk? Why wouldn't he change? His hate seemed so small now. So petty. She was babbling at him now, but he could barely see her. Had he the strength to do so, Adam might have laughed. All he managed was a small, longing sigh. Perhaps he'd been wrong. Naruto had already wrenched himself away by the time the tears began to flow, not willing, or trusting, himself to see such a scene. It was too much by his reckoning, too personal and painful for him to bear witness. He wasn't even certain he'd managed to kill the man. In the end, he paused just long enough to retrieve Wilt and Blush, sheathing the former and the latter before leaving them with Blake. She wouldn't even look at him. It should have stung. That it didn't should have disturbed him. He only felt cold. As an afterthought, he left the weapons with Blake. We done? Yang jerked a weary thumb over her shoulder. Not quite. Naruto followed the motion, and his right eye slowly began to twitch. By some miracle, Torchwick had crawled out of the train. In one piece, at that. He couldn't stop himself. The moment he saw him, his vision tunneled. Without thinking, he stormed after him. To his credit, the thief didn't flinch at the sight of him. Somehow, he managed to keep his hat on despite all hell breaking loose. Somehow, he still wore that smile. That damn, smarmy smirk. It made his blood boil. Perhaps the master criminal knew this. Maybe he saw the anger burning brightly in those red eyes. Regardless, it didn't change the outcome. He didn't even try to put up a fight. Why would he? He'd seen this kid catch a train. With his bare hands. That about tore it. Torchwick raised his hands. I surrender? Yang's boot crashed into the side of his head and laid him out. Now you do. So, Ruby ventured hesitantly, skipping up to their side. Is that it? I guess we won? It didn't feel like a victory, not by any stretch of the imagination. It was enough. They were alive. A harsh click and pressure against the right side of his head said otherwise. I'm afraid not. In all his years, Naruto never had a gun held to his head. It was something of a novel experience. How ironic. While in the care of Salem's minions, he had been poked and prodded time and time again. Maimed. Poisoned. Wounded beyond measure, his mind and body broken down again and again. But no one had held a gun to his head. For the first time since escaping, he genuinely didn't know what to do and found himself at a loss. Nor did he know the man holding him at gunpoint, for that matter. He seemed like someone in charge. He looked at Legion. Something clicked in the back of his head, something Watts had once said to him. You must be Ironwood. It was more a question than anything else. Speaking was a mistake. It only made the man suspicious. 
I'll say this once, lay down your weapons and surrender. The revolver, and that scowl, didn't waver. Come quietly, and you won't be harmed. Ruby squeaked. On what charges? Y stepped forward. You can't do that. No, stop. Don't do it. Blake cried. He's innocent. Whiskers, what the hell are you doing? Yan yelped. Move. Try as he might, Naruto just couldn't bring himself to do as they asked. This, this thing isn't human. Sure enough, Ironwood condemned him. It needs to be brought in. Blake bridled. I'm not human either. Ironwood blanched. That's not what I meant. Ruby and the rest saw their chance and crowded in, shouting condemnations. Of course, that set the other students off, and soon enough, Naruto couldn't make sense of anything. Terror coursed through him, and panic bleated in his head. Brought in. Why did they want him? What had he done? No. Not again. Never again. He could run, of course, turn tail and flee back the way he'd come. No one would be able to catch him. Ruby, maybe? Even if she could, she certainly wasn't strong enough to stop him. Yes. He should run. Mistral should be nice this time of year. Or perhaps Vacuo. No one cared about Vacuo. It would be better for everyone if he ran. He was a danger. A threat to everyone and everything. So what if he managed to control himself this time, to hold back in spite of everything? Would he be able to do so again? He wasn't sure. No, more than that. He'd made friends. Friends willing to throw themselves at this man. However fleeting and fragile those bonds might be, he wanted to cherish them. And yet, you're afraid. Salem's voice surged to the forefront of his thoughts with a vengeance. They could be using you, for all you know. Just as Watts and the others did. Like you did, he growled. My boy, I never sanctioned those ghastly experiments. He almost heard her scoff, even as he felt the truth ring in her words. You were far more useful to me untainted. If you had but come to me, I would have taken them to ask. Instead, you murdered a very useful pawn, wounded another, and ran away like a petulant child. Come home. Her tone turned soothing, almost motherly. Let me help you. These fools are unworthy of you. Why defend them? Why surrender to them? Why trust them? Why you? His rage threatened to ignite before he smothered it. Is that not what you're considering? Running away? Oddly enough, those choice words motivated him. He always ran from his problems, didn't he? Naruto was so very tired of running. So you've decided then. Something like that. Naruto blew out a breath and opened his mouth to speak. What's all this, then? All eyes turned toward the speaker. Ruby lit up a heartbeat later. Headmaster. By contrast to Ironwood, this man moved at a sedate pace, taking everything in slowly as he approached. Perhaps it was the cane. Or the cup of coffee in his hand. It might have been the glasses. Who knew? Whereas Ironwood clearly preferred military garb. This man favored the color black more than any other, only a green scarf serving as a splash of color. Keen eyes peered at him, framed by a strong jawline and white hair. His presence was a strange one. If he was at all alarmed by what appeared to be a grim in their midst, he did little to show it. If anything, his arrival made Ironwood bristle. I have the situation under control, Oz. Yes, you seem to have things well in hand. The headmaster scoffed pausing to take a sip of his mug. Would you kindly put your gun away? From what I've seen of him thus far, our friend is quite tame. He leaned past the general for emphasis. Can you understand me, son? Ironwood growled. You. Naruto's head bobbed warily. Yes. He speaks. Ajpin hummed. Fascinating, even for a grim. He's not a grim. Ruby saw her opening and took it. He's human. Keen eyes snapped back to Naruto with hawk-like focus. Oh? Is that so, Miss Rose? Oh, Ozma. Salem crooned in his head. Meddling as always, I see. You overreach yourself. Well, that settled things in Naruto's mind. Salem disliked this guy. Surely he couldn't be that bad. What could possibly go wrong? With a supreme effort of will, Naruto raised both hands and folded them behind his head. 
Scarlet eyes slipped into azure. Claws retracted. Pale blonde hair surged through white as some semblance of color returned to his cheeks. His back shuddered as his tails retracted, plates of bone all but dissolving back into the tan, scarred flesh of his bare chest. Gasps arose in answer. Someone gagged in the background. Crap. He'd forgotten about the scars. Well, too late to hide them now. He took the tiniest pleasure in the way Ironwood's eyes widened at the extent of his old injuries. Ruby less so. He'd never seen her so pale. Fine. Let them see. She wasn't lying. I'm not a grim. He smiled brokenly. I'm human. But I'll do as you ask. He'd played his part. The ball was in their court now. Slowly, carefully, Naruto knelt toward them. Not in Ironwood's direction. To Ashpin. I surrender. You can't throw him in jail. He's not a grim. He fought with us. He helped us. You've said that several times now. Ashpin blew out an exasperated breath. So what do you propose we do with him then, Miss Rose? I... I don't know. Ruby swore, arms flailing before they came crashing down on the man's desk. But you can't just lock him up and throw away the key. It's not right. If it were within my power, I would gladly let him go, but... No buts. Naruto hadn't had any plans this morning. His routine consisted of eking out a living and continuing to squat in Mountain Glen. No grand heroics, no chasing Grimm, no rescuing crazy little huntresses wielding a giant ass scythe, much less accidentally stealing said scythe. No stopping trains. No killing wanted terrorists. It was meant to be an ordinary day like any other in a string of ordinary days. A simple life lived in simple solitude, where he could ignore the ghosts of his past and recover where he had no chance of stumbling onto any grand plots or dastardly schemes, until a little girl with a scythe upended everything. Today was just full of surprises, wasn't it? To make matters even more baffling, said girl was now ardently defending him in the face of any and all scrutiny. What was she, his lawyer? She was certainly tearing into Ashpin as if she were one. Each argument a man made found itself dashed against the sheer wall that was Ruby Rose. It was like watching. A beautiful disaster unfold. You wanted to look away, but you just couldn't. Miss Rose, you must understand the gravity of this situation. Nope. You're being irrational about this. Nope. Would you let me finish? Nope. Truly, it was a fearsome thing to behold. Remind me not to get on her bad side. Naruto muttered with a word of awe. I didn't think it was possible to weaponize such cuteness. Just think of the possibilities. Yang's elbow jabbed his fractured ribs, and he sucked in a vicious breath as he toppled out of his chair. W-H-Y-Y-Y. Oh, crap. Sorry. To her credit, his fellow blonde at least sounded contrite for her actions as she hauled him upright again. Forgot about those. I didn't mean to hit you there, hey? Then it was her turn to tumble backward with an angry squawk as he headbutted her chin. Damn it, whiskers. What was that for? Naruto dove at Yang and tackled her to the floor. Revenge. So that's how it is, huh? Weiss palmed her face as they tussled. Children, the both of you, cease. A glyph sprang into existence between them both, bodily flinging the blondes apart. Naruto let himself be blasted back with a laugh, the first he genuinely felt in a long time. Sequestered in the man's tower, He'd initially found himself the subject of some scrutiny as Ruby and Ashpin bickered back and forth. None of the sort Ironwood had brought to bear earlier, and he would have to meet the man again once all this was done, but scrutiny all the same. He didn't like it. Oh, he understood the reason well enough. They were terrified of him. Anyone with a sane mind would be. That Ruby Rose and her friends weren't almost led one to question their collective sanity. Still, everyone had been tense. He was more than happy to give them an outlet for it, distract them, if nothing else. Only a few moments before, the rest of Team RWBY crowded around him protectively. Weiss at his right, Yang at his left. Blake had shadowed his chair, Adam she'd sword clutched against her chest. She looked lost and refused to meet his eyes. He couldn't tell if she was relieved, cross with him, or some ghastly mixture of the two. Adam had meant something to her even twisted as he'd been at the end. 
And now, none of them were dwelling on that awful mess. Victory achieved. For all his faults and flaws, Naruto was still good with people, when he chose to be. Was this what it felt like to have a family? Siblings? He rather liked it. They barely knew one another, yet they'd fought together. Bled together. Nearly died together back on that train. Theirs was a bond forged through fire and flames, blood and battle alike. They'd had every chance to stab him in the back, and they hadn't. That spoke volumes for their character. As such, it was all too easy for him to strike up a rapport with Yang and the others. Blake was the exception to the rule for the time being, but that was to be expected. Psychopath or not, he and Yang had killed someone near and dear to her. Those teary golden eyes had told him more than words ever could. Adam was nothing to them, no, less than nothing. But he'd been something to Blake. Perhaps he still was, and his death had redeemed him in her eyes. Who? Could say? Whatever the case, he owed these girls his life. Or unlife, as it were. Naruto wasn't wholly sure he could properly die anymore after what Salem had done to him. Would Ashpin be worse? Or was that his paranoia talking? True, you are somewhat difficult to kill at present. The devil herself hummed in his ear, briefly turning all his thoughts to static. And Ashpin lies. You would be wise to distrust anything he says. He's likely to betray you at the earliest convenience. Bull. Naruto's lip curled as he shot a thought back. You're telling me you won't? A moment of poignant silence swept through the back of his mind. Then came the laughter. My dear boy. Salem hummed softly, and for a moment... Naruto swore he felt her cold fingers cupping his cheek, cradling his visage as a mother might a stubborn child. The truth is far more painful than a lie. And why would I betray you? No, he really did feel her hand there. BRR. Still, he ignored it. Come now, look at me when I'm talking to you. Don't be rude. It was only when he felt that unseen hand turn his head that his blood turned to ice. Blue eyes met tainted crimson framed by a pallid visage and ashen hair. Her body was ethereal, little more than a looming wraith composed of black smoke. She didn't so much move to his side as she did glide across the floor. All the colors of the world seemed to drain away around her, and he realized with some horror that no one was moving. Ruby was still glaring silver daggers at Ajpin, one finger poking against the man's chest. Yang lay doubled over in the corner. Her mouth still open as she laughed at Weiss, the latter even now frozen with her hands on her hips as a softly smiling Blake looked on. None of them saw this terror. None but him. Is this not better? The mother of Grimm tilted her head. Now we can converse properly. Why the hell could he see her? Worry not, your little friends aren't aware of my presence. Salem hummed, perhaps sensing his confusion as he scrabbled backward. See for yourself. Ignoring his startled squawk, she roved across the room once more and paused just before Ashpin. Her hand slid harmlessly through his chest. Even he can't see me, though I suspect he senses something amiss. He always was the perceptive sort. Doesn't bloody feel like it? Naturally. She glided back to him again, and once more, he felt her hand glide across his shoulder. This must come as quite the shock to you. Did you not think I was capable of such a feat? Words dried up in Naruto's mouth and refused to give her the satisfaction of speaking. It didn't stop the slow smile that spread across her face. We are connected, you and I. Salem elucidated, smirking against his scowl. From the moment you emerged from that grim pool, so too was our bond forged. Do you not see this? Your existence has meaning. Worth. More than you can possibly know. When he didn't answer, her smile only deepened further. Ah, your thoughts betray you. Did you think I begrudged you for hurting my pawns? The laughter came on again, a soft, bemused chuckle. In truth, I would gladly throw the lot of them away ten times over for one such as you, for you are more than any of them could ever be. But like any child, you chose to rebel. And I allowed it. She drifted past him, a spectral hand sliding across his head. Why else would you be able to escape the Grimlands? Naruto's breath caught in his throat. Liar. She was lying. She had to be. She couldn't have. You didn't allow anything. He choked out, climbing to his feet. 
I got out of there on my own power. Believe what you will. Slim shoulders rose and fell in a dainty shrug. It matters little to me. You cannot stop what has been set in motion. Find Cinder if you wish. You'll find her here in Beacon. While his eyes widened at the mention of her minion, Salem merely flicked. A flippant palm at him. Kill her, break her, make her yours. I care not. Consider this an act of good faith. Something about her words irked him more than her smile ever could. You just throw your own pawn away? And what of it? Salem surprised him with another shrug. Her death would inconvenience me for a time, but now that I know the fall maiden is trapped somewhere within Beacon, it matters not. If not with Cinder, then I'll just find another vessel. She has ever been expendable. You, however, are irreplaceable. Ashpin, however, would try to kill you in a moment if he knew you we could converse like this, the short-sighted fool. Something snapped deep inside Naruto, then. Then just what the hell am I to you? Perhaps it was his own madness. Perhaps it was despair. Perhaps it was simply frustration. Who could say? Regardless, he swiped at her. Salem made no move to escape. On the contrary, the goddess of Grimm accepted the blow wholeheartedly, arms spread wide as his fingers dove deep into her chest. It felt like dipping his hand in an ice-cold lake. His fingers were left tingling and numb as he jerked away. Salem took the opportunity to surge forward. Everything. All at once, her face dominated his vision as her forehead pressed against his. Eerie eyes narrowed upon him with frightful intensity. We did not meet by chance, you and I. Ours was a faded meeting from the first. You may choose to hide your new gifts, but know this. She leaned closer, cold lips brushing the outer lobe of his right ear. None will ever understand you as well as I. Your pain, your solitude and your rage, your fury at having your world and all your loved ones taken from you. I know them all. What do these children know of you? Nothing. Less than nothing. Perhaps you'll come to thank me for your new strength someday. The words stung, but Naruto refused to let them show. He crossed his arms defiantly. Not likely. I'd rather kill you. Very well. I cannot force you to accept my words. With but a sigh, she withdrew and turned the tables on him again. You may well be stronger than me, but I cannot be killed, even by one such as you. Likewise, I lack the strength to slay you, and even if I possess such power, I do not wish to kill you, Naruto. Our battle would be legendary, but it would serve no purpose. We would only exhaust ourselves. Why fight one another when we could rule? Her silken smile stilled the instinctive protest he tried to offer. Think on that. He clamped down on that thought before it could consume him. Time snapped back like a rubber band and it was with a heavy heart that Naruto returned his attention to Ruby and Ashpin. The latter was looking at him now, a single silver brow arched in confusion. Crap. Had he asked him a question or something? You seem out of sorts, sir. Are you all right? I'm not your son, he muttered. Quite right. Salem's voice preened like a proud parent watching their child's first steps. Is this what it feels like to have pride in someone else? How fulfilling. Shut. Up. A poor turn of phrase. Ashpin conceded, utterly unaware of their argument. Now then, Miss Rose and I were discussing what to do with you. Right. Weiss snorted. Discussing. Ruby beamed. Heh. I did good. Be that as it may. He is not a student, and a great many people saw him transform. The headmaster declared, finally demolishing Ruby's prickly protests through sheer tenacity alone. Even if he were to be enrolled, assuming I could allow the public to accept it, he would have no team to support him. He paused and steepled his fingers, giving his words time to sink in. I cannot simply attach him to yours or anyone else's for that matter. Not with the vital festival at hand. Her spirits plummeted, and Naruto's with them. However, the faintest smile plucked at the corner of the headmaster's mouth. There is, however, a third option. General Ironwood suggested it. Well, he amended with a grimace. Demanded, really? I'm speaking of a chaperone, of sorts, for the time being. Someone to watch over our friend and keep him out of trouble. Ruby perked up, but Naruto rapidly shook his head at her. Wait, then who? As if waiting for that very moment, 
the elevator behind them shot open with a rush. Salutations! Penny? Ruby cried out in disbelief as a blur canonied into her. Hello, friend Ruby! Naruto had expected many things when those doors opened. Indeed, he thought himself ready for anything short of an elevator full of grim. He was not ready to find a civilian in plain clothes. Bright green eyes almost too bright regarded him happily, her face framed by a cloud of curly orange hair. Well, that earned her points in his book. At least the rest of RWBY certainly seemed happy enough to see her, which implied they knew her. It still left him very much in the dark about everything. Why is she here? Miss Polandina is uniquely suited to contain you if you lose control. Ashpin circled around his desk and laid a hand on Naruto's shoulder. Her presence is part of your probation. Just like that, Naruto's gaze snapped back to Penny. Contain him, he had said. He didn't sense any negativity from the girl. Or anything, really. His senses had been sharpened since he emerged from that blasted pool, but he still didn't see how a simple girl could possibly hope to match him, or why Ashpin thought she might. Now that he thought about it, he couldn't sense her. At all. She was standing before him, and though her smile looked a bit too fake, and she smelled faintly of metal, he couldn't understand the void she represented. But that didn't make any sense unless... Oh. Oh. Well played, Ashpin. For once in his life, Naruto agreed with Salem. Hello? And there she was in front of him, wearing that damned smile of hers. Quick little thing. Are you a friend of Ruby? Lazy blue eyes flicked over her shoulders. Ruby flicked him a pleading look, silver eyes wide. Yeah, sure. Naruto shrugged reluctantly. Guess you could say that. Penny tilted her head. Does that make us friends then? Behind her, Yang and Blake rapidly shook their heads. Weiss merely palmed her face. Naruto didn't realize why until it was far too late. By then, the words had already come pouring out of his mouth. There were just some things that would never change about him. This? This was one of them. He always spoke without thinking. Yes? Team RWBY sank to their knees with a collective moan. Naruto never heard them. His ears were too busy healing from Penny's delighted squeal. Well, that confirmed his suspicions. Human lungs couldn't reach that kind of decibel, but the joy in her eyes was all too human. Sensational! Penny flung her arms up with a delighted cry before said arms crushed Naruto around the waist. I've never had a boyfriend before. Now, even Naruto wasn't that dense. Irk? Also ribs! Stop! Penny, no! Ruby appeared at his side in a rush of crimson petals and somehow managed to pry the girl off. Not like that. I do not understand. The girl, or was she a robot, tilted her head askance. Is he not a boy and a friend? Does that not make him a boyfriend? No. Someone's got a crush. Yang crowed. Yang. Ruby all but howled at her sister. I know. -o. Penny only tilted her head a baffled smile on her face as she watched them bicker. Such a pure machine, Salem mused idly. Perhaps you should see to sparing her when Veil vale burns to the ground. Double irk. Why would she reveal something like that to him? Was she lying? Was this a trick of some sort? Salem wasn't the sort he could read, and it infuriated him. Her mind was foreign to him, but she never spoke without reason. That was the one lesson he'd learned from their little chats. So why tell him this here? Why now? What did she gain from it? Could he defend Vale from a horde of Grimm? He knew the answer. Could you maybe not do that? He grimaced, shooting another thought at her. Please? Oh? He could hear the smile in her voice as much as the satisfaction dripping from that singular syllable. Are you asking favors of me now? Bold of you. Very well. This time he felt the woman's icy presence press against his mind gently like a lover's caress. I shall grant your request just this once. Naruto nearly yelped aloud. Just like that? Cinder's plan calls for the immediate destruction of Beacon, but not mine. An unseen finger flicked his forehead, eliciting a flinch from the blonde. She, and by definition I, only require the relic within. If it were to find its way into her hands, or mine. She amended at the scowl that followed. Then I would have no interest in this wretched school. 
There it was again, the distinct feeling that he was dancing to her tune. Salem claimed that she didn't lie. Perhaps she was right in that. She didn't need to lie. She had an unlimited army at her command. What need had she of lies when she could drown the world in grim? Naruto felt his eyes narrow as Penny prodded at him, but he ignored her in favor of the bemused goddess. What are you up to? Me? Nothing. Nothing at all. I simply want to see what you do, my dear. She laughed at him. It was a soft, musical sound that sounded entirely too amused for his liking. Will you slay Cinder? Will you betray your friends? Will you take the relic for yourself? Or will you choose another path altogether? Choose wisely. The fate of Vale hangs in the balance, and your little friend has been trying to get your attention for quite some time now. I'll leave you to her. I'm sorry about this, new friend. Penny's sudden apology instantly yanked him back to reality. General Ironwood instructed me to give you this. Wait. Naruto frowned down at her, baffled. What are you going to? Here you go. He didn't notice the gleaming silver bracelet in her hand until it was too late. Even as he realized her intent, she ducked down and clamped it onto his right leg. Blue eyes fluttered rapidly. More so when the device gave a small beep as it activated. No. She hadn't. Surely not. The hell is this? I'm afraid that is a tracking anklet, my boy. His hoist favored him with a commiserating look. Make no mistake, you are a guest of Beacon, but your presence has some parties concerned. You will stay with Team RWBY this evening until we can find proper accommodations for you. He continued, favoring Penny with a nod. Penny shall serve as your minder in the meantime. She saluted. Yes, sir. Great. Yang grimaced. Guess we'll have to break out the sleeping bags. One last thing. Ashbin inquired, tapping his cane against the ground. You say you were thrown into a grim pool. Did you see the ones responsible by chance? Naruto had pointedly gone out of his way to avoid names, and Salem, deliberately on his part. Cinder was his to deal with. No one else. He wouldn't be denied his retribution. Tyrion had paid with his life. Hazel had lost an arm, and likely his life, while what's an eye. Cinder fall, well. He wasn't sure what he was going to do with her. Death was too good for someone like her. She had played a pivotal role in breaking him when he first arrived in this world, weak and lost as he was. He couldn't simply reveal her to Ashpin. No. Absolutely not. See, you're already thinking like a grim. He could all but hear Salem croon in his ear, urging him toward his darker desires. Cinder did hurt you after all. Hurt you so very badly. Does she not deserve to suffer as you have? She gave you so many scars. Naruto swallowed the bile in his throat and willed himself to speak. I did. They're not a threat. Not anymore. I see. Ashpin actually looked a touch relieved at that. Before you go, he posited one last time. Would you be willing to demonstrate the form you utilized during the breach? Ruby bristled. I don't think that's a good idea. Naruto agreed wholeheartedly. Do I have to? I can't control it for long. Rest assured, anything you do won't be held against you. The headmaster spread his arms loosely at either side. You are among friends here. Liar. Salem scoffed. Naruto blew out a breath and reluctantly relented. He saw Ashpin's expression change a heartbeat before it started. Fascinating. It was like flicking a switch in the back of his mind. These days the change proved itself just as mental as it did physical, and that it unshackled him as much as it did his restraints. Blue eyes shimmered red as white scarab burned black. His teeth sharpened, and his fingers hooked into vicious claws as his body hunched over. Tan skin shimmered into ebony darkness as a series of jagged white spines and ghastly bone armor burst from his chest, shoulders, and back, followed soon thereafter by several looming. Tentacles! Wise toppled backward with an undignified shriek of surprise. Penny actually dared to poke one of the prehensile limbs with a finger. Huh! Shiny! Those are not tentacles! Blake put in, raising her voice at last. They're clearly tails! Look at them. You would know, wouldn't you? The heiress cried, flailing upright. 
All eyes turned toward the lone faunus in the room. Blake looked left. Blake looked right. Blake turned scarlet to the very roots of her hair. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? You practically read smut. Wise slammed a finger against her teammate's nose, and the blackhead darkened further still. We've all seen you read that filth. Yeah, that's on you, kitty cat. Definitely filth. Ruby's head bobbed. It's not filth, the faunus cried. It's literature. Weiss planted a hand on her hip. Ninjas of love? Really? Naruto perked up, the words momentarily breaking through the haze that shrouded his thought. Ninjas of love? Was that a novel or something? It sounded suspiciously like Ika Ika Paradise, something that he'd sworn never to speak of again. Something that brought back memories of Jiraiya, and by definition, pain. He could have said any number of things to diffuse the shouting and hair-pulling that followed, but he didn't. And so the argument raged onward. Naruto groaned into a hand, forcing the words out. So, this is my life. How troublesome. Ruby patted at his arm. S.H., it'll be all right. A pause followed. So, can he use? Young! Ruby wailed. Naruto planted a palm on his face. Right, that's it. Changing back now. That should have been the end of things. After all the chaos he'd endured in the last 24 hours, Naruto was more than content to fling himself face first into the nearest bed he could find, even more so to let Ruby and the others bundle before him like a shield wall to hustle him back to the dorm, with Penny bringing up the rear. They certainly set a blistering pace across the plaza, all things considered. Ashpin had been rather insistent on that bit. No one wasted any time, anyone foolish enough to bar their path, reporter or press or otherwise, were summarily forced aside. And then he saw her. Blue eyes snapped into savage scarlet the moment he recognized his target. It wasn't a conscious decision on Naruto's part to look, on the contrary, he wasn't even trying when he saw her in the hall. A flicker of black in his peripherals drew his eye, and he looked out of instinct if nothing else and it was instinct that doomed him. Really, he shouldn't have looked. Oh dear. Salem's airy sigh confirmed it. That was sooner than I expected. Salem had it lied. She was right here. In Beacon. Only a few feet away from him. Judging by her ashen expression, she hadn't expected to see him again either. Clad in the student uniform of Haven Academy, ah, so that was her angle and flanked by two students whom he didn't recognize, she stiffened the moment she saw him. Amber eyes widened as shock and surprise went to war within her gaze. But only for a moment. Then her smile returned, and she had the nerve, the gall, to actually approach him by herself. Cinder. He could have killed her in that instant. Could have revealed her name and exposed her identity then and there. He didn't, because he knew she would immediately do the same to him. Hateful woman. Spiteful creature. She made the fox inside him seem tame by comparison. But he had other ways of dealing with her. And she him. No one knew about Salem. No one could know about Salem. The moment they did, he'd be thrown into a cell. A cell he could escape from, of course. A cell all the same. He'd have to fight his way out, and that. That was something he couldn't countenance. Is there a problem? Penny asked. Hmm? Naruto blinked the haze away. No. No problem. Just saying hello to an old friend. I'll be but a moment. Wordlessly, he stepped to Cinder and met her halfway, leaving Penny half a pace ahead of him. Cinder was of a like mind. Emerald and Mercury's saving grace was that they didn't know Naruto, nor he them. She suspected he'd kill them if he knew their faces. As things stood, he dismissed them out of hand and focused solely upon her. That'd be his undoing. She had allies in places he wasn't even aware of, while he dared to move in public circles. It left him weak. Exposed. Now, she just had to survive their initial encounter. Cinder. His greeting was curt and harsh, his face carved from granite. You look well. She favored him with a false smile, well aware of the eyes upon them. No thanks to you. A fist trembled at his side. Va weakness. Was he still so affected by what she'd done to him? No. That wasn't it. Naruto wasn't trembling from fear, 
but excitement. He wanted to kill her. Wrap his hands around her throat and squeeze. She could see it in his eyes, the way they flickered from sapphire to scarlet. Why was he here? How had he gotten into Beacon? She'd heard tell of a monster fighting back in the breach, but she had given the matter no more thought. More fool she. Still, he wouldn't act here, or so she told herself. Even he wouldn't be so foolish as to. Crack. Five open fingers slapped her across the face like a vicious whip, leaving an angry red handprint behind as her cheeks screamed in pain. She stumbled back, stunned, keenly aware of the interested students and the gasps that followed. No doubt they thought this a lover's quarrel of some sort. Clever boy. He knew she had no desire to reveal herself. Not without so many students present. Still, her own golden orbs briefly burned before she mastered herself and raised her gaze to meet his. Crack. This time Cinder thought herself prepared for his attack. This time she made the mistake of catching his wrist. Her arm went along for the ride, and the slap turned into a punch that knocked a tooth loose and sent her all but sprawling to the floor in a tumbling heap. That was all the Q Emerald and Mercury needed to rush to her side as she'd planned, of course but by then Naruto had already withdrawn, and that blasted little ginger was rushing to his side and bringing the others with her. He leaned down and hissed at her before they could. There's more where that came from. Have you come to kill me then? Hidden in his shadow, her eyes burned with golden flames. I won't go quietly. And I'm not handicapped this time. His gaze didn't leave hers. But kill you? The blonde tilted his head. No. That would be a kindness. Without another word, he released her shoulder and walked away. Your punishment must be more severe. You'll suffer as I have suffered. Only then will your debt be settled. Salem won't take my death quietly. Kill me, and you'll bring her wrath down on your head. She expected the words to count Naruto, make him hesitate at the very least in the threat of retribution. She wasn't prepared for the small bemused smile he granted her instead. It sent a shard of ice lancing through her heart. You really do have no idea, do you? What the heck was that? The little silver-eyed lass swooped in before Cinder could respond, arms flailing. She didn't even realize the danger. Why would she? She was blind to his anger, and Naruto was quick to hide it again in the face of her scrutiny. Even now, his scowl snapped back into a smile as he led her away. Nothing, just an old lover's quarrel. He flicked a dark glower at her. Cinder here insulted my family. I took exception to that. She hadn't said such a thing, yet she found herself forced to play along, nodding as Ruby frowned at her. Well, if she was being rude. Arrogant fool. Cinder scoffed as they rejoined their little group of friends once more. Their confidence would be his undoing. Still, she couldn't quite fight down the shudder that followed when Naruto glared back over his shoulder at her. Those cold blue eyes bore into her very soul and burned it raw. Damn it. Damn him. Damn them. She wouldn't die quietly. She was meant for greatness. She had a destiny didn't she? It began with a prank. Now, one might be forgiven for thinking pranks harmless. They often are. Little more than tricks and traps. A whoopee cushion here, a banana peel there. Nothing nasty. A practical joke, perhaps. Some mischievous little act that others might shake their heads at and move on. After all, pranks are harmless, aren't they? They can't hurt anyone, and you certainly can't scare someone with a bit of mischief, right? Wrong. Pranks can be terrifying. It just takes a little imagination on the prankster's part. A bit of thought, and a harmless, prank can turn deadly and torment its victim. Terrorize them. Instill fear in their hearts. Why, with enough repetition and escalation, these wicked deeds could even torture someone. Cinderfall was about to learn that lesson firsthand. She ran from the shadows. Cinder fled through twisted corridors and darkness unending, seeking an escape searching for an exit where none was to be found. She knew there must be one. There had to be. Beacon wasn't so large as to lack one. She knew that on an instinctive level. She'd seen it. Walked right through it just the other day. And yet now, she could not find it. The shadows found her instead. They hounded her every move, stalked her very steps. They snatched at her ankles as she ran, 
ever trying to trip her up, constantly seeking to drag her down. She tried to burn them away with fire, yet still they pursued her. She hacked at them with her blades, yet still they hungered for more. There was no escape, no shelter to be had, no one to save her. On some instinctive level, she knew this had to be a dream, if only because the alternative meant she was going mad. Yes, this was a dream, a nightmare, a vision, some ghastly specter come to haunt her sleep. No matter how terrifying they might seem, dreams couldn't hurt you. Cinder knew that. It was a well-established fact. Anything she experienced here in this dream couldn't possibly hurt her, and yet she still felt pain here all the same. Her calves ached, and her lungs burned from running. Every gasp was agony, every tortured blink made her eyes sting and ache. How long had she been running? Minutes? Hours? You look tired, Cinder. A familiar face bearing whiskered cheeks, red eyes, and black scara stepped around a corner to cut her off, their body wreathed in shadow. Cinder saw them coming and dug her heels in, halting lest she crash headlong into them. She knew who it was even at a glance, and that glance had her throwing herself backward from those welcoming arms. Only two beings bore such a ghastly gaze. And this was not Salem. Cat got your tongue? Naruto Uzumaki tilted his head. You look surprised to see me. Back. This, this is a dream. She skittered away, swords in hand as his gaze bore into her. You can't hurt me here. A dream? His smile didn't help matters. Is that what you think this is? No. He shook his head. This isn't a dream. Not as you know it. Where am I then? She challenged, stepping towards him. Red eyes flashed. Somewhere you really, really don't want to be. Indignation flashed through her, hot and angry. You dare to threaten me. Silence. Cinder tried to speak, tried to offer some witty retort to that effect, but the words cut off abruptly, and she choked on them, as if someone had plucked out her tongue. Her hands flew to her throat. She could breathe. She had air. She'd simply lost the ability to speak. Golden eyes widened wordlessly. Surprised? The blonde made a show of inspecting his fingernails. Don't be. Like I said, this isn't a dream, and you have no power here. I've got some things to get off my chest. Now seems as good a time as any. Something stirred in the shadows behind him. Something large. With nine tails. I trusted you. Those scarlet orbs bored into her very soul. And you betrayed me. Cinder backpedaled, a roaring flame springing to her hand. It guttered out uselessly in the dark, dwindling to the merest ember in her palm. The great cinder fall. Her former victim sneered at her, the faint light twisting across his visage. Look what has become of you. His arms spread wide, and the flame shrank further still in her grasp. A rat in a maze. And yet still you think, and scheme, and betray. His words cut deep as the darkness pressed in on all sides. You hunger for power, strength unending. No crime is too great for you, no depravity too dark, so long as you meet your goals. She stepped back and felt her back press against something solid. Still, the creature loomed closer. A towering red iris opened in the darkness. Cinder gazed long into that abyss, and the abyss stared back. What was that? What was it? What was it? Her mind gibbered madly at the sight of the creature. No. Abomination. It didn't look right. It looked. Sick. The red blur lay blackened by tar in intermittent patches, ghastly white spikes jutting over its body at random, interposed by bits of white bone-like armor worn over its hulking form. Gaping jaws parted wide, glistening with viscous strands of saliva to swallow them both whole. Naruto ignored their impending doom as though it were no more than a mild breeze. No, she realized. Cinderfall, meet the nine-tailed fox. Naruto gestured grandly. Fox, meet Cinder. I think he was nicer once. Naruto mused idly, thumbing his chin. He had a name, too. Now he's just a teeming mass of anger and hate. You and Salem did that to him. A lone finger stabbed out at her and she flinched away despite the distance between them. To me when you threw us in that grim pool. He hates me. I hate him. But if there's one thing this guy hates more, it's you. 
And if there's one thing you taught me, Cinder, it's that the enemy of my enemy. A keening sound escaped Cinder's teeth. Is my friend. A new voice rumbled in the dark. You would have gotten along well with Sasuke, I think. Naruto continued, heedless of the eldritch abomination lurking over his shoulder. You're practically made for one another. Two devils, each lusting for strength. At least he had a reason for it. You. You're just cruel. Cinder tried to muster the words, to no avail. Speech still eluded her. She settled for an impotent glower. At my weakest moment, when I was alone and wounded I trusted you. A note of pain etched itself into his voice for a moment before his eyes hardened and the anger buried it again. And how did you repay me? With treachery. You said Salem's Tower was safe. Protected. That I'd be able to recover there. What did it matter? She thought to harness his incredible power for herself, and, when that proved impossible, tossed him aside. If she'd known he was housing this kind of monster, she would have run screaming in the other direction. Blast it all. He would have made such a useful pawn. As though sensing that very thought, Naruto's visage darkened. He stepped forward, ducked her sword when she swiped at him, and struck her across the face with the back of his hand. The blow sent her sprawling into the shadows. They clung to her like a long-lost friend, dragging her down, sapping her strength. Damn it. Damn him. She'd done nothing wrong. He'd been a fool to trust her so easily back then. This was his fault. Not hers. You lied to me. He snarled, baring his teeth at her. At any time during those experiments, you could have stood up and said, No, this isn't right. No, this is wrong. We won't behave like animals. A booted foot crunched down on her sword when she tried to raise it, sending it skittering away into the dark. But you didn't. Not you. Not what's. Not Tyrion. Not even Hazel. I had to cut my way through them to freedom. They've all paid for their crimes, one way or another. That leaves you. Firm fingers reached down and cupped her chin, forcing her to look at him. You'd always be by my side, you said. His lips quirked into a scowl as he held her. Forever, you said. That was a lie too, wasn't it? That's all you do, Cinder. Lie. Your strength is a lie. Your promises are a lie. Even your life is just that. A lie. And we're going to tear it all down. The fox's jaws closed around them both, and Cinder woke from her nightmare with a strangled snarl, choking down her bile. Skin soaked with sweat, hair lank across her face, she gasped for breath, deep heaving gulps that couldn't quite fill her lungs with air. She hissed out a curse beneath her breath, pleased to find that she could speak, yet seething all the same for the indignity she'd suffered. Just a dream. She hissed at her own traitorous heart, even now hammering in her chest. Just a dream. Ignore it. Suppress it. Pretend it never happened. She wouldn't let her fears master her. She refused. When she stretched, something brushed against her ankle beneath her sheets, a strange, foreign sensation that had her jerking backward without thought. Naturally, her first instinct was to summon a blade and lash out at the offending object. Unfortunately, that would have torn the sheets beyond repair. With a supreme effort of will, she forced herself to be calm. Calm. Think rationally. It's likely nothing. With a flick of the wrist, she swept the sheets back. And saw. Her own severed head stared up at her, golden eyes wide, an apple lodged firmly in her mouth. A pit of dread opened in Cinder's stomach, swallowing everything she'd ever known. Instinctively, she touched a hand to her face, and yes, it was still attached to her neck. Which meant the face, before her was just that, a pale imitation. Nothing more. Dread abetted, the pit filling in with burning anger, raging flame. Adding insult to injury, there was a note attached to her forehead. Three words awaited her. Soon. A friend. Most would have screamed at such a threat or the danger it implied. They would have shrieked or cried out. Cinder did no such thing. She felt no fear. Only rage. Her hand lashed out, flung the fake against the nearest wall, and burned it to a charred crisp, heedless of the ruckus her minions made as the sudden blast of heat and flame woke them from their slumber. Rather than blood, a plume of harmless smoke arose to greet her as the skull evaporated like so much mist. Ha! Just as she'd expected. 
More of his trickery. Cinder ignored the questions Emerald and Mercury flung her way, tore herself out of bed, and stomped into the bathroom. She didn't so much walk as she did stalk into the shower. A brisk wash followed as she scrubbed herself down ruthlessly, rubbing away every bit of stale sweat that clung to her form. She all but attacked herself with her bar of soap, trying to scrub away her fears with the dirt. Her none the wiser. He could have killed her, but he hadn't. Why? Was he trying to torment her? Make her suffer? The idea that he could be so petty beggared belief. He could hate her all he wished, but it changed nothing in the long run. She had a purpose. Destiny had chosen her. Not some meddling brat of a boy. Yes, she'd happened upon him when he was weak. Yes, used him for her own ends. Yes, he'd suffered for it. But that was the way of the world. Bloody evolution. Only the strongest survived in this wretched world. And for all his anger, Naruto wasn't strong. He'd do well to remember that. But if that were the truth, then why hadn't she been able to contact Salem since? Shampoo stung at her eyes as her fingers dug into her scalp, and she redoubled her efforts, stamping that traitorous thought down. Once she finished, she dragged herself out of the shower on stiff legs and wrapped herself in a towel. Her reflection gazed back at her from the mirror, curve shrouded by steam, and Cinder took a moment to preen. Then she flicked her wrist anew and banished the haze with a subtle breeze. And she screamed. No, no, no! What is this? Her hands flew to her face, but even that did little to hide her horror. Someone had drawn upon her visage, leaving three horizontal black lines on either cheek. Not only had they endured the shower, but if anything, the ink looked angry and red from the scrubbing she'd done as if someone had tattooed the marks there. Impossible. She would have woken to such a thing, wouldn't she? Nor were those the only changes. Bright eyes traveled northward to her hair and widened further at the inexplicable sight she found waiting there. Those precious ebony locks she had been so proud of, the hair she'd worked so hard to maintain, that fine curtain of darkest midnight, could no longer be called such. Not at all. Not in the least. Someone had bleached her hair a bright, platinum blonde. The shampoo! She realized with a hiss, touching a hand to her still wet hair. Sure enough, she found a fresh note when she turned hate-filled eyes towards the bathroom door. Enjoy the new look! A friend. Brat! Cinder bit her lip until she tasted blood. Burn him. She was going to burn him alive, scorch his flesh. No. No, that was what he wanted. He wanted her to explode like this, to lash out in anger. It was fine, she told herself. Yes, this was fine. The dye would wash out eventually. And if it didn't, well, she'd just dye it black again. She knew what the brat was playing at. He wanted her to lash out at him for this slight, and in doing so, give him an excuse to humiliate her further. But she wouldn't. No. She refused to give him the satisfaction he sought. She might not be able to beat him in a fight not when he was at his peak, but she could deny him, force him to make the first move. He wouldn't attack her in public, after all. He didn't dare, for fear of repercussions. Her plans weren't in shambles. She knew the maiden was here in Beacon, and Roman had done his deed to the letter in regards to Atlas matters. Everything was going according to plan. Time was on her side and even with Adam's untimely demise, she was certain their agreement would hold. He may be dead, but his successor had proven pliable. The white fan was all but baying for the blood of his killer. She certainly was. Scowling, she stormed to her dressers ignoring Emerald's startled squawk, and yanked it open. What she found there turned her breath into an angry hiss. Somehow, someway, every single garment had been dyed a hideous shade of obnoxious orange. And of course, they came with yet a third note. Gotcha, bitch! A friend. Cinder twitched. A muscle jumped in her jaw. She tried to be silent. She really did. Hey there, boss. Mercury chimed in behind her. Fancy to change? Cinder felt a tooth crack somewhere in the back of her jaw. Growling, she turned to face her minion. Not a word. Something clicked ominously under her right foot. She had all of an instant to look down, and her world burned white. Blake looked up from her book. Did you hear that? I did. 
Penny chimed in helpfully. It sounded like an explosion. Naruto and Ruby exchanged a brief glance and the slightest of smiles. Aha! Yan saw both and pounced like the huntress she was. What did you two do? Nothing. A beat of awkward silence passed between the six of them. Penny was the one to break it. But friend Ruby, you and Naruto snuck off last night, and Marph? Ruby didn't move. Ruby lunged. Penny blinked as a whirlwind of rose petals slammed into her, followed by a pale hand clamping down on her mouth. The mechanical girl tilted her head, green eyes narrowing in confusion at Naruto as Ruby held on for dear life. For his part, the wayward didn't look up from his cards. Yan waggled her eyebrows suggestively at him, to no avail. His whiskered face held firm. When multiple elbow nudges failed to coax any incriminating words from him, she turned her attention to easier prey. Oh? She cooed. What's this? A midnight rendezvous? Ruby released Penny and flitted backward, keening through her teeth. Young! We didn't do anything! Right, Naruto? I can neither confirm nor deny the veracity of that statement. Blue eyes remained fixed steadfastly on his cards. Go fish, Penny. Trader! Do I require a fishing pole? Penny asked. Penny, no. He sighed. That's not how you play. Is that why some of my ice dust was missing? Weiss asked. All she received for her efforts was an innocent whistle, not a lick more. Blake watched them go back to their game but didn't call them out. She knew better. And so a day passed. Then another. Another still. By the end of the week, Cinderfall would be at her wit's end. Cinder was terrified. Emerald could see it in the eyes of her mistress. She could feel it in every step. Hear it in her every labored breath as she watched her pace back and forth in the cramped confines of their room. Smell it in the flickering flames burning in the woman's palms. Once, such intensity might have inspired the former thief. This didn't. It felt wrong. Stilted. Their leader was putting up a desperate front, a facade to hide what she really felt. The fact that Emerald could see through it at all was even more cause for her alarm. Mercury saw through it too. Boss? You alright? You don't look so good. Cinder didn't answer them. Why would she? She'd gone utterly out of sorts, and her appearance reflected her ruined mental state. Her once beautiful ebony tresses were a tangled mess still dyed blonde by that fiend. Her makeup smudged, her dress rumpled. Even her composure lay stripped bare for all to see. Gone was the regal woman who inspired fear and awe in her followers. In her place stood a miserable wretch, tormented by some ghastly terror Emerald did not understand. It wasn't a pleasant sight. Cinder had always been a bastion of ruthless calm, a deadly predator stalking her prey. She was something someone to be feared. Yet, after a relentless onslaught of increasingly lethal pranks, the tables had turned. A week ago, she had been the hunter. Now she was the prey. She was acting like it too. Nervous, skittish, jumping at shadows, refusing to leave her room. People were starting to ask questions. They believed their excuses about being off for now, but this wasn't going to last. Cinder? Emerald tried again in vain, desperately trying to reach her. Are you all right? You haven't eaten in days. Haunted golden eyes rounded on her, and then she fought down a flinch. There was a high, wild light there, itching to lash out at something. Anything. For a fleeting second, she thought Cinder might actually strike her. But, no. No, she would never do that. No. Surely not. Where had her confidence gone? Why was she so afraid? Who was that man? What had he said to her? All these questions and more bleated in the back of Emerald's mind like a miserable child forgotten at Christmas. Once she would have ignored them. Now she found herself unable to. Don't you understand? A high, nervous laugh escaped her savior. That's what he wants me to do. Can't you see? She shook her head eyes wild. He's watching me. Always watching. He'll surely poison whatever I eat. But he hasn't? The former thief objected. Has he? Cinder went back to pacing and ignored her. Still, the silence stretched on. Mercury was finally the one to break it. Look, boss. He began slowly, 
choosing his words with tentative care as he pushed himself off a nearby wall. If you want, M and I can take care of him. No, you will do no such thing. Cinder's shriek had the two of them flinching all over again. That, that thing is beyond you. Both of you. Then why not gang up on him? Merck flung up his arms in thinly concealed exasperation. We can take him. He's just one guy. A fireball leaped from Cinder's palm and smashed against the very wall Mercury had been leaning upon, forcing the poor assassin to leap aside lest he be immolated on the spot. Pain blackened and twisted away as the fire licked at it hungrily, tearing a hole in the plaster until it finally guttered out and died. Not one more word from you, dear Mercury. Cinder's words were an absolute hiss, and for a moment, just a moment, she seemed to regain her lost composure. If you so much as sneeze in the next 30 seconds, I will personally tear your head from your shoulders. Do you understand? The assassin gulped audibly. Right. Shutting up now. Good. Golden eyes narrowed. Now get out of my sight. Both of you. Emerald hastened to do as she'd been bid. She all but bolted towards the door. As you say. Inwardly, however, she began to make plans. It wasn't like her to defy Cinder. Her word was usually law. When Cinder spoke, she obeyed. Under normal circumstances, Emerald would have done just that. Dropped it, let the matter go, and trusted in her mistress to see the day. Not this time. She owed Cinder everything. Everything. If not for Cinder, she'd still be eking out a living on the streets. She'd be nothing. No one. She'd die before going back to that life. Die for her if need be. And now someone was hunting her savior. Tormenting her, stalking her in her sleep, haunting her every waking moment. Surely this, Naruto, character couldn't be that dangerous. Briefly, she considered informing Mercury of her scheme but thought better of it. That one wouldn't keep his mouth shut. No, he couldn't be trusted. She would be doing this for Cinder's sake. And if someone was threatening her mistress, well, they'd just have to have a little accident now, wouldn't they? Accidents happen all the time these days. Nobody would miss one student. Rip and tear. Or was it tear and rip? No, Naruto decided as he gazed balefully at a grinning young Shaolong. She looked insufferably smug with herself. Definitely rip and tear. This was betrayal, the blackest treachery of the worst sort. Deceit and deception on a level he never experienced before. He had never seen it coming, been caught totally unprepared for this trick. She'd outmaneuvered him, the tricky little minx. How had he failed to see this coming? I did warn you. Salem's voice tickled his ear. See how quickly she turned on you. Surrender. Yang warned. Never. He shot back. Then you leave me no choice. Naruto felt his fingers twitch and twist, forming clenched fists at his sides. Here in this moment, he wanted nothing more than to fling them back in Yang's smug face. He knew she could take it. Just one good smack on the nose, and he'd wipe that smirk right off her lips. You should give up, she warned once more. I'll die first, he grit his teeth. Eh, have it your way. Yang's arm rose, and Naruto braced himself for the inevitable explosion of pain. Ha! She slapped a card down. Consider yourself invaded, Buster. Surrender your troops. Naruto threw his own into the air. Damn it, Yang! Not again! How am I supposed to play this damn game? Remnant was a mad board game, and nothing could have possibly prepared him for it. Given that this was his first time playing? Yeah, bad times were ahead. Unfortunately for him, Weiss was all too happy to supply an answer. The objective of Remnant is to conquer Remnant, that is to say, the board by successfully acquiring control of all four kingdoms on the board map. She gestured grandly to the forces arrayed against him, causing him to twitch. Starting with one region, a player navigates, attacks, and defends against other players who control one or more other regions on the board, using various strategic card-based actions. Weiss, I get that you wouldn't hear a word of it. Each player controls and defends a wall, which protects their respective regions, and a conglomerate army for invading other players' walls. Yang is about to breach yours, by the way. Her words had him grinding his teeth. 
Players also receive specific enhancements based on the areas of remnant they control or their class. Thank you, Weiss. Naturally, the sarcasm sailed right over her head, and the heiress preened as she moved her own forces forward. Think nothing of it. I play grim assault against Yang. Ruby suddenly retaliated, and her sister jerked back as if she'd been slapped. Now your forces are beset by Grimm from behind, and you lose a turn. Traitor. Sorry, sis. Silver eyes sparked against her lilac. All's fair in love and war, and this is war. I believe the term is Sparta. Blake sniped. Quiet, you. Let me have this. Naruto turned watery eyes on Ruby and raised an arm. You're my one true friend, Ruby. He. She beamed back at him and slapped her hand to his. Then those ghastly silver eyes flashed. It was like nails on a chalkboard. Something in the back of Naruto's head screamed when he met Ruby's gaze, and all the strength fled from his body. His head slammed headlong into the table to escape it, inadvertently scattering the game's pieces everywhere across the board. Pain! It burned! What the devil was this? Blasted eyes. Salem howled in the back of his head. Where did you even manage to find someone like her? You alright? Naruto took one look at those pleading orbs, and all thoughts of resistance crumbled. He couldn't say it was her fault, it would be like kicking a happy puppy. You didn't kick a puppy. You just didn't. Though his mind was a mess and his body corrupted, there were lines he refused to cross. This was one of them. His hand descended on her head, idly stroking her short hair. I'm fine, he muttered balefully, turning to regard the board before them as the girls once more. But I still don't understand how you win this game. Ruby perked up. Then why don't we work together? Yang's been kicking my butt anyway. Wise shook her head, setting her ponytail swaying. Blake groaned at the very same moment. Yang hid her smile behind a palm. What followed was a long and confusing explanation that he couldn't make heads or tails of, followed by three rounds of crushing defeat at the hands of his so-called friends. Ruby did her best to help him, she absolutely did, and Blake even offered her own tentative aid when she could, but it was all for naught. Young and Wise sensed weakness and banded together to crush him every time he tried to marshal his forces. A fourth round didn't appeal to him, and finally, he threw his cards down in defeat. Let's do something else. Like what? Ruby offered the proverbial olive branch. How about we try something I don't suck at? Naruto did his best to grasp that branch. He knew he needed to behave. He couldn't lash out here. He couldn't afford a repeat of what transpired during the breach. These girls were his mindus, meant to keep him out of trouble until Oshpen and Ironwood set him up with a room of his own. He needed to stay out of danger not fling himself headlong into it. Sadly, the same couldn't be said for Penny. She'd run off an hour ago, and none of them had any idea where she'd gone. Still, this was all right. This was fine. Heh. Of course, Yang went and opened her big mouth. Someone's a sore loser. Want to spar, then? She threw the suggestion out almost casually. Might be a good way to work out stress. You sure about that? Naruto felt a muscle jump in his jaw. He hit it with a smile. You'll lose. Yang bolted upright, a grin tearing across her face. Oh ho. Someone's confident. Blake blew out a sigh. And he flipped her switch. Someone stopped a train. Naruto shot back, leaning over the table to smack his forehead against hers. Pretty sure that tops anything you've done, firecracker. Hey now, size doesn't matter, it's how you use... Oh, you bastard! Yang's face flamed, and her violet eyes snapped into scarlet as she jerked backwards. Turning my own puns against me! How could you? Have you no shame? A blonde brow rose. This from the girl who invaded my kingdom three times. Meh. She waved a hand. Nothing personal. On the first turn? A nervous chuckle greeted him. Are we fighting? Penny's head popped up over his shoulder before he could fire off a retort of his own. May I join you? Gah. The whiskered warrior recoiled with a yelp. Don't sneak up on me like that. Where did you come from? My father created me, friend Naruto. Gaula's green eyes blinked back at him. Penny, no. 
Ruby whined. He's asking why you're here. Oh. The strange girl straightened and snapped off a salute. I was fulfilling my duties. When that only earned her a few bemused blinks, she hastened to explain. The general has secured special housing for friend Naruto. I was sent to ensure it was secure. As the four girls and one boy tilted their heads, she barreled on, heedless of their confusion. Specialist Shini met me en route and asked me to retrieve you. She requests your presence for a matter of some importance. Winter? Weiss perked up. She's here? Affirmative. Penny's salute didn't lessen in the least. After all, she and I have been tasked with keeping the subject Naruto growled. Um, I mean protecting friend Naruto from those who might wish him harm? She amended awkwardly. My apologies. I was merely relaying my orders. HR and PH, better. The whiskered blonde grunted as he climbed to his feet. Fine. Take me to her. May we fight afterwards? Her request earned her a double take. Another blink passed between the quintet. Why is she so eager about this? Penny beamed. Father says true warriors can only express themselves with their fists. Are we not friends? Naruto blinked rapidly, both somewhat taken aback by the remark and touched in the same moment. It sounded just like something Guy or Lee might have said when they were alive. When things were better. For a moment, he felt a strange urge to, to hug this small metal child. He liked her. She understood. Too pure. Must protect. So he did. In a single swift stride, he crossed the table and stalked over to her. Then, before Penny could think to move, he bent down and grabbed her in a fierce hug. Friend Naruto? Penny didn't resist in the least. Why are you squeezing me? It's called a hug, Penny. He muttered into her shoulder. May I hug you as well? She ventured softly. Sure, go ahead. Knock yourself out. She frowned. I do not see why. Don't ruin this for me. Winter didn't like Naruto. If he didn't know better, he'd say Weiss's sister was determined to hate him on principle if nothing else. At this distance, one look at the elder Shini set his instincts shrieking. His legs already wanted to head for the hills, while his fists, well, he wanted to punch that sour look off her face. Would Weiss grow to resemble this frigid beauty someday? He hoped not. He rather liked the fiery little Shini the way she was. Even now she looked like she was torn between strapping him down to that operating table or just dissecting him for science. He wasn't sure which was worse. You won't let them, I trust? Salem's specter drifted past him slowly. It would be a shame if you expired. Hell no! I like my organs where they are, thank you very much. Getting closer didn't help matters any. He wasn't sure why she'd requested to meet him in one of the labs but he wasn't keen on being alone with someone like her. So he brought back up. All the while, PRWBY guarded him, shielding him from her prying eyes, until one of their number broke formation. Winter. Y saw her sister and abandoned their formation to bow forward into her sister's arms. Naruto found himself somewhat amused by the sudden lack of decorum. Well, well, well. Seemed little Miss Ice Queen had a heart of gold after all. Or maybe she was still rattled by her near-death experience back at the breach. Regardless, her sudden outburst served as a distraction all its own. Winter was so taken aback by it that she took her eyes off him to look down at her sibling. Weiss, this is unprofessional. Amar and PH. Her reply was muffled against her sister's bosom. A pale brow rose to regard her with genuine confusion. I beg your pardon? I said I don't care. Weiss pulled away a fraction of an inch, just enough to be heard, no more. I've had an awful week. Let me have this. Remarkably, Winter allowed it. It would have made for a touching scene. So, you're the hybrid, until those icy irises found him. Yes. Naruto fought the urge to edge backward in the face of such naked hostility. He knew he'd already made a poor impression with Ironwood. The man had tried to shoot him and only then imprison him when that failed. Judging by her uniform and Penny's early remark on the matter, there could be no doubt that Winter Shni answered to the general himself. Moreover, she looked like she knew how to use that rapier strapped to her hip. He wasn't stepping within arm's reach without an escort. With a look of pure murder, Winter unbent enough to speak to him again. 
the general requests another sample of your blood. She withdrew a thin syringe from her pouch, revealing a vial with it. Please hold still. This won't take but a moment. Naruto's world went red as a memory bit down. Bit. Down. Hard. Needles pain why why why. Hmm. Salem growled in the back of his head. Remind me to maim what's. I didn't authorize those tests. Friend Naruto, your heart rate is elevated. Penny touched a hand to his forearm, yanking him back to reality. Are you alright? I'm fine. He choked the words out as the room swam around him. No. He wasn't. Not at all. Not by a long shot. Even now, he could feel what's stabbing the needles into him, the drugs slowing his body, keeping him from fighting back. He could hear Tyrion's maniacal laughter. He could see Hazel looking on, not lifting so much as a finger to stop them. And he could see Cinder's smile. Naruto? Everyone was looking at him. What are you going to do with all this blood of mine? Her brow drew down and turned stormy. That's none of your concern. It's my blood. Naruto abandoned his slouch and rose to his full towering height, chin lifted in defiance. Pretty sure it is my concern. Weiss pulled back. Answer the question, sister. Not you too, Weiss. Naruto wanted to hug the small Shni for her bravery. They'd taken blood from him at least once a day for the last week. In the early days, he was too busy adapting to consider the implications, but as of late, this had become impossible to ignore. They were clearly doing something with all those bodily fluids. Arctic blue eyes narrowed, and Team PRWBY closed ranks around him. Merely a few tests. Winter, perhaps realizing she wasn't going to make any headway at this rate, conceded with a huff. As you refuse to set foot on the General's flagship, and submit to more tests like before? Never. This is the only way. Naruto realized Winter wasn't going to relent, even with five angry girls glaring bloody red daggers at her. Fine. He ripped the syringe from his arm and jammed it into a vein, trying not to watch as the attached vial filled with dark red blood. There was a brief sting of pain, but he ignored it until the deed was done. Trembling fingers pulled it away once the deed was done and he presented it to the specialist. Atlas thanks you. Winter methodically capped the needle and secured the syringe in a metal foam case. A thought seemed to occur to her just then, and she reconsidered the gaggle of girls guarding him. Why are you lot with him at all? My request was to meet him and Penny, not all of you. Training. Yang uttered the words quickly. Ditto. Blake echoed her partner. Training. Ruby sang. Weiss hummed. Sister, are you sure this is wise? Winter liked that even less. This individual cannot be trusted. You four need to keep your distance from him. In an instant, the atmosphere changed. Weiss lost her smile. At his side, Naruto felt Penny go curiously still against him. Blake sucked in a sharp breath that sounded dangerously like a hiss. Ruby, always happy, ever ready with a smile, now wore an expression carved from granite. Yang, well, was her hair glowing just now? If he didn't know better, he'd say it was on fire. Seriously? The blonde brawler offered a low whistle. Wow. Really? You did not just go there. Tell me she didn't just go there, Rubes. Too late. Ruby informed her cheerily. She pushed the Naruto button. It was nice knowing her. Yup, thought so. Yang shook her head. She really Shunta did that. Excuse me? The what? Winter blinked in the face of this sudden and unexpected solidarity, but somehow managed to rally herself once more. Naruto almost pitied her such foolishness. Almost. Seemed ignorance truly was bliss these days. Nevertheless, that boy isn't what he appears. He simply isn't worthy of trust. I don't understand. He could feel Salem tilting her head leagues away in the Grimlands. What's this button everyone keeps harping on about? Sister. Weiss inhaled deeply through her nose, closed her eyes, and exhaled. Please. Repeat. Those. Words. Naruto backed away from the tiny shni. Ruby and the rest did the same. Alas, Winter failed to realize the chain reaction she just initiated. I was merely suggesting that he isn't sound of mind. How dare you? 
Her reaction was nothing short of explosive. Mount Weiss erupted, and Winter reeled back as her little sister stabbed a finger against her chest. He saved my life. All of our lives. She stalked closer, and Winter retreated further still as her usually adoring sister still pressed the attack. When we were trapped beneath that rubble, he dug us out, armed us, and fought alongside each of us. Another poke, another awkward retreat by Winter. I dare say there's no one I trust more, save my teammates. And you dare say I shouldn't trust him? Perhaps it is you who doesn't deserve my trust. Oh, I like this one. She has fire. Naruto looked away for all of a moment, and when he looked back, Weiss was still going. Winter flinched as if she'd been slapped. Weiss. The small Shni snarled actually snarled at her elder sister as she made for the door. Good day, sister. Naruto couldn't quite catch Winter's retort as Ruby's team closed ranks around him and ushered him out of the room, but it didn't sound all that flattering to his ears. Whatever she said made Weiss draw Murdenaster with an audible screech of steel. An angry white glyph slammed into place behind them, preventing her elder sister from following. The door slammed in her face, muffling one final reply. Weiss was having none of it. I said good day. So, Naruto ventured into the silence that followed as they walked back the way they'd come. Sounds like Weiss could use that spar more than Yang. Heh. Wouldn't want little Weiss see. Ream to melt from the heat now, would we? Oh. Penny perked up, missing the byplay. Are we going to fight now? Shut up and get to the training hall, the lot of you. Naruto snapped off a lazy salute. Yes, ma'am. Say what you will about Team RWBY, but they were vicious fighters when properly motivated. Nearly three hours later, Naruto emerged from that so-called spar, with more than a few scratches and bruises. With the inclusion of Penny's unorthodox fighting style, he'd actually found himself pressed more than a few times. Without transforming, of course. He wasn't about to unleash that on his new friends. Not even in a locked room. Still, it was a good workout, all things considered. All the stress that had been building for the better part of a day was now bled away, leaving him feeling downright comfortable, heartened by the knowledge he'd be able to sleep off his aches and pains soon. That was sensational. And then there was Penny. His warden all but skipped ahead of Naruto now, glassy eyes bright with glee as she led him down the hall. There was a spring in her step that hadn't been there before and while he had a damnably hard time reading the girl's facial expressions even at the best of times, he could safely say that she was just as happy as him, if not more so. Glad you agree? He mussed her hair out of habit if nothing else, and tried to ignore the pleased hum she gave. You fought well. Thank you. She hung back to walk side by side with him once more. Still, are you sure it was wise to leave friend Ruby and the others behind like that? Not at all but they didn't have much choice. If Team RWBY knew he was being moved to different quarters clear across Beacon, they'd start trouble for sure. Bless their little hearts. They were good girls. He'd always known his rooming arrangements with them were temporary at best, but now he found he almost missed them. In the end, he could only offer a helpless shrug. We'll see them in the morning. They can yell at us then. All too soon, they arrived at their destination. Here we are. After you, friend. Penny unlocked the door for him with but a touch of her hand, allowing the weary warrior to push the door open. His new quarters were decidedly Spartan, all things considered. Unfurnished save for a lone bed, a dresser to store his clothes, and a charging port for Penny. There were bars on the lone window, and he glimpsed a heavy electronic lock on the door as it swung shut behind him. His lips quirked at the sight of it. If they thought that would hold him, they would be sorely disappointed. Perhaps he'd come to decorate this space given time, but for now, here on his first night, he found he couldn't bring himself to do so. Do you see how they cage you? Salem all but purred in his ear. They don't trust you. They never will. Ignore her. She kept his demons at bay. Better one voice whispering in his ear than a thousand. He'd take what he could get. Retiring to his new quarters should have been relaxing, should have brought him some peace and quiet. Instead, he found himself growing tense as he sat down on the bed left for him. He'd never speak the words aloud to anyone, but Salem had spoken truly. 
This place did feel like a cage. How does that thingamajig work? He flicked a hand toward the door and the imposing locket bore. The lock is to keep intruders out. Penny reassured him quickly. Not to keep you in. However, it will send a ping to General Ironwood's command ship whenever opened. To track my movements. Naruto felt a sour taste flood his mouth. No. Penny's honest reply only made it worse. Your ankle bracelet does that every hour. Despite his best efforts to master himself, Naruto couldn't quite fight down a flinch. Really could have gone without knowing that. I'm sorry. Her head tilted to one side, strangely reminding him of a kitten. Did I upset you? Naruto took a quick breath to master himself, shoulders slumping as he exhaled. She had, but it wasn't her fault. From what he'd seen thus far, Penny was still learning what it meant to be human. A few kinks here and there were to be expected. But there wasn't a mean gear in her body. She was, at her core, genuinely a good person. A bit too honest and frank at times, perhaps, but surely she could be forgiven that. It's not your fault. He said at last, not wanting to hurt her. I know you didn't mean to. Still, the fault is mine, and for that, I feel I must apologize. Penny wrinkled her nose. Talking is difficult. A bitter laugh burst from Naruto's lips before he could hold it back. That it is, Penny. That it is. Come here. He patted the empty space beside him, and she was quick to fill it. A pall of silence fell between them. Perhaps sensing his worry, Penny prodded his arm. Do you require anything? Freedom? Amnesia? His world? Cinder's head on a spike, maybe? Nah. He plastered a fake smile on his face. I'm good. Without Ruby and the constant buzz of chatter and life that her team brought with her, Naruto found he had time to think. He didn't want to think. He wanted to forget. Drown himself in happy memories, get drunk off life itself, until his past was nothing more than a hazy memory. Sadly, it just wasn't meant to be. Penny was a chatty girl for a robot, but even she could only fill the silence for so long. She asked him questions about his home, things he liked, and what he disliked. In return, Naruto did his best to find questions that he might ask in return. They did their level best to fill the empty room with as much noise and light and laughter as possible. Eventually, they simply ran out of things to say. You can rest if you want, Penny. Naruto said at last, his words echoing in the room. I'm not gonna run off. She hesitated. General Ironwood instructed me to keep watch on you at all times. But aren't you tired? Could a machine even get tired? Her green eyes unfocused for a moment as she checked her internal systems, and her faint smile turned distant. Naruto watched her with a keen eye. Sometimes, it was all too easy to forget that Penny wasn't a human being. Then again, neither was he. Not after what he had been through. Her eyes snapped back, and when they did, her face held a faint tint of chagrin. My internal batteries are running a little low after that spar, but I'm still combat ready. But you're also tired. You said it yourself? Naruto felt his heart twitch again. Go ahead. Rest. That's what humans do, after all. I'll be here when you wake up. She wavered, and so he reached out to touch her hand, pulling it into his. Trust me. If I was going to run away, I would have done it by now. Affirmative, she declared, stepping back to her charging station. Entering sleep mode. A pause, as her emerald eyes sought his one last time. Good night, Naruto. Naruto watched her lids flutter shut as he leaned back in his bed. Good night, Penny. He wasn't sure how long he lay there. Minutes? Hours? Longer? Sleep eluded him, and time got kind of funny when you didn't have a clock to tell time. Was that an intentional design flaw on Ironwood's part? Had the general deliberately denied him one, leaving him with only a window for guidance? It felt like something he'd do. Prick. His thoughts went down a dark path, and he pushed them away. With no one to talk to, no one to distract him, his mind began to spiral out of control all over again. Salem? He spoke the word, cursing himself for it as much as his weakness. No response. He could feel her presence in his mind like a tumor, but it was a distant, slumbering thing. Apparently, even the Queen of Grimm needed to sleep. Who knew? 
A faint knock echoed against his door, causing him to leap upright. Hello? The knock came again, and still, Penny didn't stir from her rest. Silently relieved, the blonde stood and padded to the door. The metal handle was cold in his hand but opened readily enough. He didn't care who it was, so long as it was a distraction. General Ironwood himself could have been standing on the other side, and he would have gladly welcomed him in at that moment. Instead, a familiar pair of silver eyes gazed up at him. Ruby? He blinked quickly, frowning when his headache returned with a vengeance. What are you doing here? No, never mind that. How did you know where I would be? Followed you. She spoke quickly, kicking one boot against the door. Wasn't hard. Can we talk? It's important. Sure. A knot of dread uncoiled in Naruto's heart as he scratched the back of his head. I'd love to. Her gaze strayed to Penny, resting in the corner. Not here. Why not? Because I'm not supposed to be here. Ruby hissed softly. We'll get in trouble. Suspicion reared its head, but Naruto stomped it down with a vengeance. It was just Ruby. In all likelihood, she probably wasn't happy with him for some reason or another. Maybe it had something to do with him being moved halfway across Beacon like he had. Now that he thought about it, that could very well be the reason. Still, he risked a glance back at the slumbering lass behind him. She'll be mad if I leave without telling her. Then leave a note or something. His friend mumbled. Hurry or we'll get caught. All right, all right. He raised his hands to placate the adorable little pout she gave him. Hold your horses. Naruto scrawled a quick one and left it on the bed for Penny to read if she awoke while he was away. Then, with a shrug, he turned and followed Ruby into the hall. Where are we going? He whispered. A bright eye peeked over her shoulder. Somewhere private. I know a place. She led him down twisting corridors, through empty halls, and silent rooms alike. A strange pang of dread pricked at Naruto as they walked, and yet again he shoved it aside. His paranoia must be playing up again. Had to be. This was Ruby. She was utterly harmless without her side. Even if she had it on her, he knew she wouldn't hurt him. Ruby was a gentle soul. So when she stopped in the middle of the courtyard, he thought nothing of it. All right. He planted a hand on his hip. Why did you lead me all the way out here? For a moment, she didn't reply. All the night was silent, save for a few chirping crickets. Her shoulders quivered. Then, without warning, she rounded on him, grabbed him by the cheeks, and dragged his face down to hers. For this. Her mouth was warm on his, and for a moment, Naruto's world went white with surprise. He didn't dare respond. Every fiber of his being froze in utter shock and confusion. He couldn't think. Couldn't move couldn't even bring himself to breathe. His senses shrieked as Ruby began to move her mouth against his, but confusion dulled his reflexes and left them sluggish. Something slapped against his chest, sending him stumbling backward. Naruto frowned at it, reached for it, felt his fingers close around cold steel. There was a knife in his heart. A sickle rammed all the way to its hilt. Ruby, he coughed blood. I don't understand. What? Before his very eyes, Ruby wavered and vanished like morning mist. His fingers passed through the illusion, and he blinked at them, not quite understanding what was happening, even as his body began to fail him. His heart was pierced. He should be dead by now. Yet he clung on. No. Not like this. He couldn't die here. He refused to die here. A second knife slammed into his back, piercing his lung. Naruto gasped for air that wouldn't come and crashed down on one knee. In his peripherals, a shadow danced. Clawed fingers lashed out and slammed harmlessly into the stone walkway. When he struggled upright, someone hamstrung him, planted a foot against his back, and forced his face into the stone. He bucked, and a shriek of pain greeted him as the back of his head smashed into someone's face. Then the blade came down again, biting deep, and a hand flew away, severed. I can't believe Cinder was afraid of you. An unfamiliar voice hissed in his ear. You're nothing. Goodbye. The naked edge of his enemy's weapon ran across his throat and opened it like a river. No further taunts came. Only the bitter release of the void as his lifeblood spilled down onto the path. 
Naruto gurgled, blinking slowly as his world faded into shards of shattered black. No. Not like. Salem stirred in the back of his head and uttered a single word. Rise. Cold fingers of the purest ice ran down his spine, and something snapped. Someone was screaming. Oh. A small, distant part of Naruto's brain had an epiphany. It's me. I'm the one screaming. It was him. Blue eyes burst into red as his body exploded into motion, tan skin going ghastly white as bulging red veins flared to life among whiskered cheeks. White bones snapped into place over red blood boiling out of his body before hardening into vicious spikes of armor. Human teeth sharpened and lengthened in a ghastly parody of a beast's jaw as six seething tails of the purest crimson burst from his back. Wounds healed, limbs regrew, and a monstrosity rose in place of a man. The transformation was nearly instantaneous, complete in less than five seconds. Five seconds for a boy to die and a beast to be born. It was time enough for his attacker to scream and run for the hills. What the hell are you? Emerald scrambled backward, eyes wide and trembling as the monstrosity advanced upon her. You're a... Monster! The beast fell upon her with an earth-shattering roar, grabbed the girl by the leg with one arm and pulled with the other until blood spattered its warped face. Its victim cried out and fell, clutching at the ruined stump that had once been her right knee. He beheld a girl with green hair, dark skin, and red eyes. Ruby's face superimposed itself over hers for a moment before he struck her again, shattering the illusion, and the raw bestial fury burned brighter still. Not Ruby. Imposter. Liar. Deceiver. Murder. Maim. Kill. Countless voices howled in his head, screaming for vengeance, fury, justice. And then his victim had the temerity to speak. To beg, to plead for her very life. I'm sorry. She wailed, arms flailing before her face, trying to ward him off. I'm sorry. Please don't kill me. Crying didn't save Emerald. Far from it. Her tears only drove the beast into a frothing frenzy. Because the beast remembered crying begging for salvation. No one had come to save it until it saved itself. It fought and clawed its way to freedom. Why should she be saved? It howled nameless fury to the heavens, then its fang maw popped open with an audible crack. Light built in the beast's maw, a blinding bulge of brilliance burning impossibly bright at the back of its throat. A clawed foot stomped down upon Emerald when she tried to crawl away, trapping the helpless thief beneath the creature's heel. Even then, she dared to beg. Please! Mercy! Mercy? What mercy? There is no mercy. The tailed beast bomb struck, and the world erupted. Rip and tear. Arf! The monster threw its head back and howled at the shattered moon. Naturally, the moon did not answer. It lacked the capacity to do so. And thus the beast roared anew. Every second of its existence was trauma, mental, physical, spiritual alike. Each breath sent the abomination spiraling into a fresh frenzy. It tore through those that dared to oppose it without guilt, without remorse, without mercy. It had been a fool to believe, a fool to trust, to hope or even dream of a better life than this. What had it been thinking? It wasn't a man. It was a monster. The enemy had seen to that. Monsters didn't get happy endings. Emerald's deceit was more than a simple cut, deeper than any knife. Her attack, wearing Ruby's face as she slammed her dagger into his chest, left a scar upon its very psyche. Simply put, it broke him. A legion soldier units buckled and shattered beneath the beast's claws. Gunfire ricocheted harmlessly off its armored carapace. Requesting backup, someone shrieked. Damn it, we need backup now. Oh gods blood on its claws. It wanted to stop. It needed to stop. It couldn't stop. Slavering jaws clamped down on metal skulls and crunched them like tin cans. Then it moved on to the soldiers. Some screamed. Others fled. It fed on their fear and gave chase. Perhaps it should have felt guilt for that. These men and women weren't its enemies. They were just doing their jobs, after all. But they had opened fire on it first. Naruto's mind was gone, locked in a cauldron of hate and suffering. He had been buried. Buried deep. So deep, he couldn't dig his way out on his own. 
he tried. Oh, how he tried. The beast wouldn't let him. This has gone far enough. Would you kindly stop? The monster paused, tails thrashing against the ground. What was that? A voice? Stop! It came on again, bringing a fresh migraine with it. I am telling you to cease. Gur. Voices in its head. Smash. Kill. Hooked claws dug deep furrows in its flesh, trying to dig them out. Oh dear. The voice recoiled. It almost recognized it this time. You've truly lost yourself, haven't you? It's so hard to find good help these days. And so it raged and smashed and sundered until finally, finally, it drew attention to itself. What the hell is that thing? The monster wearing the skin of a grim rounded on the sound. Slavering jaws parting in a hiss. It glimpsed a boy wielding a large mace slung over his shoulder, flanked by three others with lesser weapons. Gleaming red eyes narrowed to bloody slits. The nameless ones it ignored. Because it remembered the big one. This one had attacked it before. A memory stirred, bringing with it a fresh wave of hate. Hurt him. Harmed him. Its world narrowed, tunneling on the suddenly terrified boy before it. Smash! Kill! You! Searing light built at the back of its throat and shot forward in the same instant. Carden Winchester did not die. He and his team evaporated, as did a good portion of Beacon's walls behind them. Bereft of its targets, the tailed beast bomb arced up into the clouds. The explosion that followed sundered the very sky itself, banishing what few clouds remained. And still the beast raged on, tearing through the school. There was no relief, no release, no respite. It was the monster. More came to fight it. More soldiers. More mechs. It killed them too. That was all it knew to do, all it could think, all it could do. It prayed for the students to stay away, even as more men barred its path. They did not die well. None of them did. Somewhere in the depths of its heart, a tiny voice cried out. Deep in his soul, Naruto grit his teeth. Ruby, please stop me. Ruby Rose was dreaming. Really, it was a very nice dream. One involving cookies and puppies and a certain blonde giving her a very nice back massage. Just the sort of fantasy you wouldn't want to be woken from. So she didn't. Blissfully ignorant of the carnage raging outside, she turned her head and buried her head deeper into her pillow. A pleased sigh fled from her lips as she gripped it tightly. From there, she began to gnaw on the corner, doing her best to devour what she believed to be the world's largest cookie. Yum. Tasty. Friend Ruby. She stopped dreaming the moment Penny smashed her door down and thundered into the dorm at the speed of sound. Wah. Silver eyes burst open, and she flailed upright, arms flailing wildly. Unfortunately, doing so caused her to tumble to the floor. That woke Weiss up which meant she had to be prissy about it, which in turn stirred Young, and really from there it was a foregone conclusion. Everyone woke up in short order after that. Penny, what the heck? The silver-eyed warrior shot her friend a glower. Why are you here? Young proved more vocal. Yeah, what's the big deal? I need my beauty sleep. Naruto left a note saying he went somewhere with you, friend Ruby. Godless green eyes blinked back at the four of them. Yet you are here. And he is not. Have you seen him? The heck was she talking about? Uh, Penny? I've been here. Sleeping. I haven't seen him since this morning. Check the cameras or something. Blake yawned, scrubbing at her face with the back of one hand. I'm sure Beacon has those. Penny blinked. But if Ruby was not with Naruto, then who? An almighty crash rattled their room and the world with it. Wise stiffened and darted toward the window. Someone screamed in the distance. Pale eyes widened. Oh no. Ruby didn't hesitate. She leaped. Emerald, what have you done? Cinder heard the roar and shuddered anew beneath her blankets. It wasn't the cry of a man but a monster, one she recognized and dreaded in equal measure. She knew its source, even as she knew the reason for her minion's absence. Fool of a girl. She told her not to engage. What had she done? Another rhetorical question she knew the answer to. Emerald had attacked him, the little twit. In doing so, she unleashed the beast, and it would not go quietly back into its cage. 
She had seen him rampage like this once. Once. It had taken Salem herself to stop him, and even then it had been a near thing. What chance did the rest of them have now? It never occurred to Cinder that she might be able to use this disaster, take advantage of the chaos and spin it to her own ends. Her mind was too fractured by fear, and in her fear, paranoia reared its ugly head. He would seek her now. There was nothing holding him back anymore. He would come for her, and he would kill her. There could be no escape. She shivered, hugging herself. They were going to die. All of them. Every single one of them was going to die. Mercury Black knew when to cut his losses. Adam was dead, Emerald nowhere to be found, and the boss had been reduced to a gibbering wreck. All around them, Beacon had been thrown into chaos, but it was still very much standing. They were more alert now than ever. Their plan would never work now, assuming it ever had. He saw the writing on the wall, even if Cinder didn't. As of now, it was only a matter of time until they traced Emerald back to them. And once they did, well, pain and imprisonment would be the least of their worries. Sometimes it was best to just call it quits and start over. He wasn't going to stick around until Ironwood could tone down. The man was like a bloodhound. He would find them. And well, Mercury didn't like the sound of that. He was a free spirit. The idea of spending the rest of his life in a 4x4 cell just didn't sit well with him. Even if he flipped on Cinder, he doubted he would ever see the light of day again. He'd heard Atlas prisons were the worst on Remnant. Cold, small, cramped, nope. Not dealing with that. Bah. Crazy O.L. Ironwood could have Cinder for all he cared. His boss was a broken woman now. With one last lingering look at Cinder fall, still hidden beneath the blankets of her bed, he shook his head and stuffed the last of his belongings into a duffel bag. Mercury gave her one last chance, waited for her orders, for her to take charge, to be someone again. It never happened. Like a rat abandoning a sinking ship, the son of Marcus Black fled into the night. Well, boss. It was fun while it lasted. He never looked back. Wait for us. Ruby barely heard Blake's lingering shout as she burst through the window and into open air. Gravity gripped her immediately, sinking its cruel claws into her. She gave herself to it gladly, rocketing downward in a scarlet streak to alight in the courtyard proper below. Crescent rose, she never slept without her baby. Unfurled in her grasp and barked a single shot at the ground, slowing her descent just enough to make it non-lethal. It really wasn't a bad landing strategy all things considered, more of a superhero landing than anything else. Her semblance ensured she was first on the scene. Indeed, she arrived well before Penny and the rest of her friends could even think to leap out the broken window after her. Unfortunately, her theatrics did not go unnoticed by those below. Hit the deck, rookie! Coco Adele's voice hollered up at her. Wait, why was she here? Yow! Even as she hurtled toward the ground, an elongated limb of purest crimson lashed at her face, burning a thin line on her cheek. Ruby yelped and pivoted in the air bringing Crescent Rose around to sweat it aside before it could grab her properly. From there, she tucked herself into a ball, trying to make her profile as small as possible. It seemed to work, if only because a second attack wasn't forthcoming. She hit the ground running, her aura flexing as her knees absorbed the brunt of the impact. A single leap would carry her forward. Ruby! Yam finally caught her, reeling her back. Wait, damn it! Don't rush in by yourself! Wait. She couldn't wait. She wouldn't wait. She needed to be here. Now. She soon wished she wasn't. Back, back! A soldier saw and shouted at them. This area is not secure. Second years and up only, Gak? An arm lanced out, latched around his head, and flung him through a wall. And in that moment, Ruby Rose saw him. Naruto. During the breach, his transformation had left him at least somewhat humanoid. Recognizable. She'd been able to see the man behind the monstrous mask. Now, he looked more demon than man. His once blonde hair was bleached a ghastly white, his body bristling with red and white bone, flesh burned black, teeth gone sharp, eyes blazing red. She barely even recognized him now. He was a feral creature, a mad fox lashing out at all that moved. Four tails thrashed behind his back. No, five now. 
a fifth had just joined its brothers. It hurt to see him like this. Sure, he'd been surly before, but he'd been a good person. Oh, gods, Weiss whispered, stepping up beside her. Is that? Blake made a face. I think it is. Ruby stifled a whimper. This wasn't him. It couldn't be him. It just couldn't. Naruto didn't even see the five of them. He was too busy trying to disembowel Coco and her team. Three tails pinned Fox, and a foot stomped down on Velvet's leg as he rounded on the frantic gunner. Yatsuhashi's blade slammed into his back, bowing him briefly. He straightened and slapped him aside like a harmless child, sending him skidding across the yard. Red light built in the back of his throat, and he outright ignored Yatsuhashi's wild attempt to draw his attention back. He had chosen his victim. Ruby knew it, saw the death that was coming, and something in her burst. Stop! Light lanced from her eyes and struck the hybrid head-on like a freight train. There couldn't be any word for it. One moment Naruto was poised to cut down Koko, and in the next, he recoiled and covered his face with a clawed hand, his body going slack and weak. The second years balked, but Yatsuhashi took the chance for what it was and hauled her back. Fox squirmed free beneath him and dragged Velvet with him. Weiss rounded on her. What did you just do? I don't know, she wailed. Her face felt hot, her eyes itchy and scratchy, like they'd been open for far too long. What had she done? Could she do it again? Silver eyes searched for something, anything, and settled upon the strange protrusion jutting from his chest. It wasn't bone or even flesh but metal. A weapon, she realized. Someone had stabbed him there, but of its owner, there was no sign. Penny had mentioned him going somewhere with someone. Was that the cause of all this? There's a knife in his chest. Penny made the observation before she could give voice to it. I will attempt to remove it. I would ask the four of you to stand back. Jan balked. What, you think yanking it out will magically turn him back to normal? This isn't a fairy tale. He'll kill you. No. A strange calm settled over the green-eyed girl. He will not. She moved, summoning a dazzling array of blades behind her. One struck Naruto's mask. His attention snapped to her with a snarl, but by then, Penny had already closed the gap between them. Penny didn't move. To call it mere movement would have been a disgrace. She didn't move. She danced. Her blades weaved impossible patterns before her, and she moved among them slapping his claws and tails aside with impeccable poise. Time and time again, he lashed out at her. Time and time again, he sought to grab her, to rip and tear. Penny didn't let him. Alone, wholly by herself, and with no reinforcements in sight, she held him back. Ruby dove after her. We have to help. Young, blessed big sister that she was, realized her intent immediately, and made a blind grab for her hood. Her fingers brushed the crimson fabric for all of a moment, then her hand passed through a cloud of rose petals as her sibling kept going. Ruby shot forward in a streak of scarlet light, compacting crescent rose onto her back for safety. She tried to ignore her team screaming at her, telling her to run, begging her to turn back. It didn't work nearly as well as she would have liked. She concentrated on flinging herself forward instead. Without warning, she found herself within arm's reach before him. He looked down at her, startled. Hey, big guy. The sun set. Time to go to bed, yeah? Naruto spun away from Penny and swiped at her with a tail. She ducked under it, continuing her advance. Penny rammed two of her thin blades into his legs, pinning him. The beast howled in agony and backhanded her, sending her sprawling across the yard. Blazing red eyes found Ruby in an instant, wild and feral. It's all right. She raised her hands and approached slowly. I won't hurt you. He screamed at her, and she flowed around the shockwave, moving at a speed she never had before. Huh. Meat. A small part of her began to understand what was happening. Guess my semblance really is different. She'd always suspected that she had something that wasn't quite speed-based, but this merely confirmed her suspicions. Right now. It made all the difference in the world. She was faster than him, at least while he was stuck like this. Didn't make it any less terrifying, though. One good swipe would shatter her aura, which meant no semblance. No semblance meant she couldn't get out of the way. Another would probably disembowel her. 
She couldn't afford to be hit. Even once, crimson claws swept past her face, stealing a stray strand of her hair. Ruby dodged with ease, hopped over a sweeping tail, and made a grab for the knife in his chest. Sharp teeth snapped at her, forcing her to duck and leap onto his back. Clawed hands grabbed for her, and she tumbled her way down, grasping at one of his back spines to swing herself to safety. The monster, Fox, gave chase, but she couldn't bring herself to feel any fear. Everything seemed so slow now. Or was she just moving fast? She couldn't be certain. She dared not block any of his attacks. To do so would be the death of her. Naruto stomped a foot, and a sixth tail burst from the soil to stab at her throat. Ruby flung herself backward, only for the prehensile limb to bend and slam at her chin. It was going to take her head off. Too close. No time. Taut wires locked around Naruto's limbs and yanked them down, turning his lunge into a tumbling stumble. One of his tails slammed into her shoulder, tearing an arm free in a shower of sparks. It sailed past Ruby's face, trailing motor oil. Penny didn't bat so much as an eyelash. Instead, she leaped onto his back, binding herself to him. This is not who you are, my friend. Her voice sounded faintly tinny as she spoke. Remember, yourself. The monstrosity hesitated, eyes dimming for a moment. Penny. Behind her, Weiss cried out. A glyph sprang to life below him. He tried to move, only to find himself slowed yet again. Yang and Blake dove at him, grabbing his arms. Ruby saw her opportunity. In a single step, she blurred and crossed the distance between the two of them. Red petals lurched up and into Naruto's face, blinding him. He tried to lurch away, but Penny reeled him back in like a fish. Ruby reached up to grasp the knife in his chest and planted her feet there, digging in against the scalding metal. It hurt. Oh gods, the pain. It hurt so bad. Like someone had fused it with his very flesh. She wanted to let go, to recoil and cry and curl up into a ball all over again. Her scorched hand? But she didn't. With what strength she had, she reared back and pulled. Something came loose, and Naruto howled. Ruby felt her eyes blaze again, and the grief-filled howl became a croak. He spun and flung Yang to the side, followed by Blake. A crack etched itself into the surface of his demonic visage, followed by another fracture. Another. And another still. Why snarled and brought another glyph down on him, forcing him to a knee. Penny reeled back again, wires smoking with the strain. White light shone through the cracks. His thrashing redoubled then grew weak. Weaker. Weakest. We've got him. Just hold on. Like a snake shedding dead skin, Naruto fell forward to leave the crumbling husk of the beast behind. Ruby dove forward to catch him, only to realize her mistake too late. She was tiny. He was not. She was light. He was not. His weight crashed into hers and she fell. With a yelp, she pitched backward, and her rear struck the dirt. She righted herself just as quickly, blinking rapidly at the head now settled in her lap. Pale cheeks burned scarlet. Ruby. Bleary blue eyes blinked up at her, not quite comprehending. You stabbed me. No. Silver eyes flashed as she all but hissed the word at him. That wasn't me. That was someone else. He didn't seem to hear her. She had your face. Sounded just like you, but she had red eyes too, and green hair, dark skin. Yan limped over, leaning against Blake. Neither breathed a word. She looked down and saw why. There was a hole in his chest. Clear as day, where the knife had been. Black blood leaked fitfully from it. Black. Not red. Horror mounted her mind, and she struggled to shake it off. No. Not like this. He'd be fine. Naruto would heal. He always did. A little stab wound wouldn't kill him, right? It wasn't me. Ruby argued, clutching at him. I saved you. Naruto granted her a broken, lopsided grin. Yeah, I guess you really did. His hand rose to cup hers. Say, Ruby? Yeah? Hey. She patted his cheek three times in rapid succession. I didn't hear you. Stay awake. Don't fall asleep. He didn't seem to hear her. I'm tired, Ruby. I think, I think I'm gonna take a nap. 
Naruto, no! She shook him. Bad Naruto. Stay awake. Hey, so bossy. Love you too. His eyes drifted shut with a world-weary sigh. They did not open again. Ruby went absolutely still, and not for the words she just heard. A terrible foreboding bloomed in her chest and took root there, strangling the joy she felt. She gave Naruto a shake. Another when he didn't move. Harder then. He didn't stir. Her throat closed. Tears burned in her eyes, sharp and salty. No. This wasn't happening. It couldn't be happening. He'd not die like this. She brought him back. She saved him. He couldn't just. Naruto? She whispered his name fretfully. No. You're fine. You're just sleeping. You can't. Just like that, Naruto Uzumaki breathed his last in her arms. Ruby whimpered softly. Penny exhaled in a shuddering breath. His vital functions have ceased. Yan nudged her. Come on. That ain't funny. Don't say stuff like that. Dull green eyes turned to face her. I was not making a jest. Blake's hands flew to her mouth. Weiss tore her gaze away. Ruby Rose screamed. Thank you for watching our YouTube video. Your support means the world to us. If you enjoyed the longer content and had a fantastic time immersing yourself in our anime universe, let us know in the comments section. If you loved what you saw, we kindly ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. By doing so, you'll stay up to date with all our latest releases and join a community of passionate anime enthusiasts. Don't forget to check out the video description for links to other exciting videos. We have a treasure trove of anime content waiting for you to explore. Once again, thank you for being a part of our anime journey. Your support keeps our passion alive.